Hi, Derek. I turned your video off a bit because I'm opening the the doors okay. to, to attend this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to give the welcome. It, it's fine. Uh, we have a few minutes before we start. But just uh, when okay. you are ready, feel free to enable your video and, and share your desktop again. Okay, good. Hola Antonio, Daniel, Diego, Juan Luis, eh, buenas tardes, en unos momentos comenzamos, ah, ah mira había más personas, eh, disculpen a los que no mencioné, eh, en unos momentos comenzamos, por favor, eh, Este taller va a ser en inglés. Yo estoy disponible para apoyar con temas de traducción si necesitan. Eh, pero el taller va a ser en inglés. Los materiales están en inglés. Es relativamente sencillo de seguir. Eh, Yarek habla, este, habla relativamente claro. Digo, es, es de Polonia y tiene acento de Polonia, pero es bastante claro. Entonces, si, y con toda confianza, si necesitan ayuda o si no entienden algo, por favor digan, o si quieren hacer una pregunta y no están seguros de cómo hacerla, o háganla en, el, en su mejor inglés y yo los apoyo, o háganla en español y, y yo la traduzco. Eh, coméntenos justamente desde en lo que empezamos, desde dónde están en el chat, y ya voy a hacer el switch a inglés okay so hi jack sorry i had to i wanted to give some welcome words in english um i mean in spanish in spanish um i don't know what i'm speaking anymore um hello everybody we are about to start in uh, about three minutes uh we're just gonna let uh more people connect. Uh, this workshop will be in English. It will be led by Jarek Potuk. Uh, and um, I will help with any translation needs. Uh, don't worry, we are among friends. We don't expect anybody of you to speak perfect English. Uh, so if you have a question, feel free to make it either in Spanish or, or give it a shot uh, doing it in English. If there's some confusion or anything, I'll be glad to help with any questions you may have. Uh, Jarek will, 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 I mean, will be sharing slides that, that have pretty much all of the, the information that he will be uh, going through. Uh, and those slides can be shared, right, Jarek? You can yes. share those, those slides with the attendees. Yes. Awesome. Um, so we are about to start in two or three minutes. Yeah, a couple of minutes, let's give it. And I do have to make a technical stop because due to the delay we had in the talks, I haven't been able to stand up from my chair the whole day. So I'll be right back. <laughs>
Okie dokie. Awesome. Are you ready, Jarek? Yep. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good, well, good night, <laughs> Jarek. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we're going to get started with this workshop uh, on on how to contribute with, to Apache Airflow. Um, we're gonna, I know that some of you may not be familiar with Airflow, that's fine. We will start with a brief intro on what Airflow is. And it is awesome to have Jarek with us because Jarek is one of the big shots <laughs> at Airflow. <laughs> not that big, you know. <laughs> not that big. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he will tell us about it and, and a bit of how how it's structured their flow. Uh, but he he's an important contributor to Apache Flow, so it's awesome to have him. And he's joining us from Warsaw, Poland. It's night for him, so thank you so much for being here, Jarek. And just um, for for everybody. Um, and Mara, I think, wants to make a photo bomb. <laughs> a video bomb. So um, we're going to be, this is going to be done in English, but feel free to make your questions in Spanish. Eh, aunque el taller va a ser en inglés, eh, si tienen, quieren preguntar algo, no están seguros cómo preguntarlo, pueden comentarlo en español y, y los ayudamos con la traducción de su duda. Y los materiales también los vamos a compartir. Okay, so having said that, the floor is yours, Jack. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks Pedro for the intro uh, and as regards to Mara. Uh, we work together for quite some time already, so we know each other well. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this, uh, this training, uh, this workshop today is not gonna be uh, the a very, very interactive one. Like I will try to make it in as interactive as possible uh, in terms of, uh, I know Ped, we talked to Pedro uh, before, so I know you will be contributing like after the workshop uh, later. Uh, uh, usually during this workshop, we try to do some hands-on and maybe we will try here as well if you are ready for that. But first, a few things for the workshop. Uh, uh, stop me at any time if you want. Just raise your hand and ask questions. I really like uh, to be stopped. <laughs> during the, the kind of workshops, because that makes me like, rather than telling everything, if you are asking questions, it's much, be much better for me also to understand what you need to know. And maybe, you know, that I made some uh, not clear explanation or maybe maybe some additional information is needed and then and, and be completely, op I'm, I'm completely open to, to answering those questions during the, the workshop. So if you really, if you want, I mean, I can also, I invite you also to talk if you would like to, uh, not only like write the questions in, in, in chat, but also to talk uh, because uh, it would be great if we can have some discussions, if you have some comments to what I said or questions uh, and we would like to discuss, I'm also very open to that. Uh, so and Yes, actually, sorry to, to interrupt Jarek. And actually Jarek's preferred mode for doing this is on meeting mode where everybody can see each other and everybody can talk. Um, and since I wasn't sure of how many people were going to join, I, I, I was tentative on that. Uh, I configured the session webinar mode where participants by default can only chat, but, uh, but we, can, we can switch it. I mean, I can enable the webcams and, and give you permissions to open your microphone. And yeah, if somebody doesn't behave, I'll just, mm -hmm. I'll just kick them out. But, uh, but yeah, we can do that. So yeah, please feel free to, to ask any questions you may have. Don't wait. I mean, there's no need to wait. You can text the questions, or even you can, I'll give you permissions on your microphone, so you can uh, you can make a question uh, through, through voice if you want to, okay? Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, this is a little bit experimental as well, because uh, the hands-on part will be very limited if, if there will be, but, but if you, if one of you uh, are already uh, like have the computer with you uh, with some development environment that you used to code a little bit on and you have some Python experience, then I would invite you later Maybe you could share your screen and and go through the initial setup that we have for for the development environment or environment so that other can see that. So if there is anyone who would would like to, uh, I'll ask. Just just prepare for that. I'm I'm not biting, you know. I'm, I'm not uh, you know like everyone like is nothing nothing very very scary there. Uh, and, and I'm happy to help, but it would be great if one of you could share the screen and try to set up the environment and I will walk you through and, and show to others how it looks like so that you could have the experience and feeling how it looks like. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and I'm really helpful and like, don't be afraid of me. I'm, I'm like, if, if something goes wrong, we will try to go together and fix it. So, so just mentally prepare for that. But while, while I'm doing the intro, uh, and I'll 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 get to that when we when we get there, okay. So uh, now, first let me uh, try to share the screen. Yeah, uh, sorry, you had le left it sharing in your Twitter notifications, and I don't know if that was <laughs> if we should be seeing that or not. So I unshared it, but now you should be able to try it again. Uh, yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay, uh, so you see it, yes? Yes. Okay, good. So a few words about myself so that you know who I am. Uh, I'm an currently independent open source contributor uh, and advisor to open source projects. And I'm focusing exclusively on open source right now and open source contribution and development and mostly on Apache Airflow. Uh, and that's a, a bit privileged position, I think, uh, because the, there are not many people who can leave from open source contributions like full time, but it's possible. Uh, as you can see from my example, I am I, after a few years of uh, learning and being part of the open source, I came to the position that I can be independent and only work on open source stuff. And that's, that's actually quite cool. And I will tell you why uh, during this uh, presentation. I'm also an Apache Airflow committer and PMC member. I will tell a little bit also about what the committer means and what PMC member means for Apache Airflow projects and, and for Apache projects in general. Uh, I will tell a little bit what Apache is uh, as well, so that you know that. Um, yeah, my Twitter, uh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm in Poland, uh, Warsaw, as Pedro mentioned, it's uh, 9.15. PM for me, so so it's a, 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 a late ev event, but I'm kind of flexible. A few weeks ago, I ran a similar but longer and more interactive workshop in Taiwan, uh, also remotely. So from Taiwan to Mexico, and then then I'm gonna run this the, the third one in uh, in December in Poland, but also probably online because of the the history, the, the thing you know, we we all know. Uh, but um, but yes, I'm in Poland, and uh, and that's a great thing, great opportunity that we can I can give such a workshop online to people from Mexico. Uh, thank you, Pedro, for the <laughs> for the opportunity. I think this is this is really great, and the, the conference is great that Pedro organizes. So so I'm I'm, I'm happy to share some of my my passion uh, and my my experience with you, so that you can maybe you know. If one or few of you will get a little bit of that passion from me, that I would be, I would be super, super happy because this is something I, I love to do. How, how does the the workshop or partially presentation, partially workshop look like? Um, like first, I'll do some intro, and it will be a little bit longer than usual because I know you have no uh, big experience with with Airflow. Maybe you would like to know. Uh, uh, more about Airflow, what it is, and like why it makes sense to start your experience with contribution with Airflow if you haven't contributed before, or how it is uh, like how it is different from other projects that if you contributed before. 
So I will just tell you more about Airflow Apache Software Foundation and and the way how it works in open source uh, because that's not obvious for for people. Uh, good. Then the next thing will be the I'll tell you um, a little bit uh, how to prepare and run the environment uh, on Apache Airflow. Mm. So the Apache Airflow is rather complex project uh, in terms of like it has many moving parts. It doesn't mean that you have to understand everything, quite the opposite. It's, it's quite impossible to understand everything, but it is organized in the way that it should be the whole idea, and that, that was a big part of my uh, my work over the last few years, the whole idea is to make it as easy to start contributing as possible and as easy to bring new contributors in. So we have a very well organized and prepared uh, developer development environment. So you should be able in like my goal was like in 10 minutes, <laughs> but uh, realistically speaking, it's something like, like half an hour, an hour, depending on your network connectivity, you should be able to have a, an environment that you can develop your code, run your tests, contribute your code back. Uh, and so this is, this is, this is the goal. Uh, even though the, the, the environment is quite complex, we made it rather simple to set up and I will tell how to do that. I will show you how this how this looks like, uh, and maybe at that time, if we have some some brave soul there who would like to share uh, their screen, uh, uh, maybe one of you could uh, simply set it up on your own machine. Uh, I'll tell some requirements, some prerequisites that are needed, uh, and if some of you would like to do that live, I would love to uh, you know to sh to get the screen shared, and then we can like walk through that live while someone is setting it up. Uh, then I will uh, tell a little bit how to find and choose uh, the right issue to work on. Because when you want to contribute on uh, any projects, it's good to where, where to start. Yeah, like, it's like usually things are overwhelming when you start. So if you can focus on something small and, and how, how to find the right issue for you, I will tell you what's, how you can find it. And this will be pretty much similar to other open source projects. Then usually we do the coding and like live code review, but I don't think we'll have any possibility even to do that today. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, let's see how, how it progresses. Uh, uh, and if not, then, then the, the live coding and the, the coding and live and the code reviews will happen later when you hopefully some of you, or maybe all of you will do some contribution uh, over the next few days, because that's what I understood from, from Pedro that later uh, there will be some some kind of uh, like the time for you to uh, to do the contributions um, any questions so far any uh, ideas or any you know any uh, anything that you would like to know that i didn't tell before if you have some just uh, please raise your hand or write your question yes and and i just gave everybody uh permissions to use their microphone so you can unmute yourself and make a question or you can type it whatever you prefer yeah so if there are no questions again stop me anytime i'm i'm happy to be uh, stopped and uh, and then uh, and then i can answer any any questions uh, but I'll, I'll just just progress now so the intro uh what makes uh, what makes Airflow so interesting for contribution and how uh, where it came from? So here uh, on the slide you see the kind of progress with Apache Airflow of Apache Airflow over the last uh, six years. Uh, it's quite an old project already. Uh, it started in Airbnb in two thousand fifteen. Uh, that it was started by Maxime Bichemin. He's kind of serial open source uh, project starter. He also started Apache Superset uh, and built some business builds some business on top of that. Um, he 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 was the original creator of Apache Airflow in Air, Airbnb, and he convinced Airbnb that uh, whatever they use internally in their in Airbnb might be good to be open sourced and might be good to be 
donated to Apache Software Foundation. I'll tell a little bit about Apache Software Foundation in a moment, um, or maybe even now, actually. So the Apache Software Foundation, this is an organization, non-profit organization, uh, which started from people who developed uh, the original Apache HTTP server. Uh, it is uh, the biggest and most uh, known uh, it's the biggest and most known uh, um, uh, organization that takes care of the, the nonprofit organization that takes care of the of, of open source projects, and it is a fantastic organization because because it is uh, it consists of individuals only, uh, no com companies, no corporates can be part of the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, Apache Software Foundation runs pretty much like half of the internet is run on Apache Software Foundation projects. And this, uh, it's like when, when you calculate the, the kind of the value of the software that Apache Software Foundation governs, it's about like $20 billion, apparently. And uh, fascinating thing is that pretty much no one in Apache Software Foundation is paid for what they are doing. This is all volunteer effort. Everyone, including the board, including the, the president, the treasurer, and everyone else, they do all the things for Apache Software Foundation as volunteers. Uh, and this is this is fascinating how, how it works. And the same with projects. Like nobody is paid uh, by the organization to contribute to the to the project, to the projects, to any of the 400 or 500, I think, projects that are run in Apache Software Foundation. Uh, uh, but there are other ways how people can get get paid for it. Like I'm 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 fully paid for my my, my contributions, for example, by by different stakeholders. Uh, Jarek, Jarek uh, if somebody Diego is asking if uh, what he needs to have installed in case he he volunteers. Uh, okay. Just a, a Python 3 environment, or what would that be? Yes, I can type in, maybe that will be a good time for to, to just, just a moment. I will, uh, there is this, uh, the prerequisites, I'm sure, let me see. Because I have the ones from the Airflow Summit workshop. Yes, that... if you have them, that, 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 that would be great. So okay. this, this is it. But basically it's a either Linux or Mac OS, or Linux uh, or Windows subsystem for Linux on, on uh, WSL2 on Windows. Mm -hmm. I have that, but I don't know if, if I should share the instructions, you know, forking the airflow and then cloning the repo and following yes, the yes. Breeze prerequisites and running Breeze and all that. Or should we wait to do that until we're I demoing? I, th I think if we are showing, then we can wait with the whole uh, with progressing it. But you can you can share it for like kind of to see what will be done, uh, okay. uh, so that so that this this can be prepared. But yes, we will do it uh, live uh, uh, then. Okay, uh, then. I'll put that in the chat and we'll go over it. Thank you, thank you. That's that's cool. Okay, so going back to the the, the Apache Software Foundation, uh, it has a very uh, it. it some people say bureaucratic structure, but I would say very well organized. Like the, the, there are some procedure and processes that all the projects called go through. And for, for example, every project has to go through incubation period. And this is what happens with, happened with, with uh, uh, Airflow. It started, it, it, it was donated. That's how it looks, looks like. So Airbnb donated the software to Apache Software Foundation. So Apache Software Foundation become the owner of the software. Uh, and uh, and released the and software was released under Apache Software Foundation license, which is also important. Um, and incubation process started in 2016. And as you see, uh, this uh, the, the kind of incubation project is it usually takes long. So there are like initially a small number of people contributing, small number of users. This takes like two three years usually. That's the experience which I have from looking at some other successful Apache Software Foundation projects. And this is what happened there. So there was this incubation period in 2016. And as you see, like, the, it like steadily grew the usage of 
this is like the contributions, number of contributions, steadily grew till 2019 when it became the ASF uh, top level project, so called, which means that the ASF uh, actually confirms that this project is run properly according to so called Apache way. So the way how the projects are governed in the in the in the open source software, you know, in the open source community, in the Apache open source community. I joined the project more or less here. So just before the Apache, the Airflow um, became the top level project in, in 2018 in the in, in August. So it's for me one, two, three, more than three years now. And I witnessed the the kind of maybe not exponential, but quite interesting growth. Where, as you can see, more and more and more contributions happened. More and more people were interested in contributing. More and more contributors. More and more, more stakeholders. Uh, so companies who are interested in like paying people, for example, to contribute to to the project. And uh, a huge milestone that happened was uh, in 2021. Uh, in December, just for Christmas, uh, in 2020, sorry, in, uh, just just for Christmas 2020, uh, we released Airflow 2. So as we see pandemic, which came around here, I think, uh, was it? Yes. <laughs> Didn't change much from the dynamics. And uh, there is a very good reason for that, because we were always working in a distributed environment. So all the people who are contributing to uh, open source software like Apache Software Foundation, they work all over the places from Australia to US, uh, Europe, uh, Africa, you name it, Mexico as well. Uh, and those people are contributing in an asynchronous way, uh, communicating via email and, and GitHub. So pandemic didn't change too much for us. Uh, we just worked uh, <laughs> from different places, uh, not from the offices, but from our homes. And uh, there was no impact, as you see. Airflow 2 uh, was a major, major release uh, for us because we um, kind of re, maybe not rebuilt the software from the scratch because that, that, that's not what happened. Uh, but uh, we addressed a lot of uh, issues that we couldn't uh, address with Airflow 1 because of backwards compatibility and problems uh, connected with that. And we released Airflow 2 after like maybe two and three years of working, which was from grounds up refactored, not rebuilt, but refactored in the way that it make it easier to release new versions. And we are now at Airflow 2.2, which is 2.1. 2.2 is going to be released in like maybe a few days or weeks. Uh, and, uh, and we are speeding up in terms of like really adding new things to Airflow is now much faster thanks to the investment we've done in Airflow 2. And that also means that we put a lot of investment into making this as easy to contribute and as as well organized as possible. I'll tell a little bit more about uh, this later. A few numbers. Uh, this, this is like a very complex screen, but what is important here those are just two periods of contributions in recent, like in July, uh, August, and August, September, uh, a month of contributions. And as you will see, uh, like we have like, in July, we had like 400 people contributing uh, with 263 commits. That's, you know, uh, 10 com more than 10 commits a day, if you only count working days, although many people are committing like myself in the non-working days. And in August, we had 135 authors and 325 commits, which is like 15 commits a day. That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's why it is important to understand that this project is, is very much alive. It's like a lot of things are happening. And uh, that also gives, it is, it is heavily used as well, because otherwise it wouldn't be that much alive. So, so contributing to Airflow means contributing to something that is actually heavily used all over the world. A uh, few other numbers, we had 10,000, and Pedro knows everything about that because we run uh, Airflow Summit together with Pedro. We had 10,000 attendees all over the world of the users of Apache Airflow uh, att attending the or registering to Airflow Summit. More than 5,000 of them were watching online the summit. So you can imagine this is a huge audience and those are those were mostly the users of Airflow all over the world. 
and again, like I don't know how many countries, a lot, but 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 from everywhere. Okay, so that's the, the sto history. Uh, now a little bit like what airflow is because I was talking about airflow, <laughs> but what airflow is. So probably not everyone uh, knows what airflow is. So I'll explain it briefly. Uh, uh, if you know. Uh, all the kinds of data processing tools that are out there. So there are many, many different kinds of tools like Spark. There are some uh, services which are running the cloud like Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, Azure, Spark as a, as a, as a kind of processing engine, Hadoop, uh, and hundreds, hundreds, literally hundreds, hundreds of other tools that are processing data. And this processing can happen in various ways. There are some SQL databases, no SQL databases, some tr transformation ETL engines, uh, uh, DBT, and like the, literally hundreds of different tools. Uh, and why I'm telling that, because, and, and, and that's a surprising, because Airflow is not one of them. It, it, it is not a data processing tool. And that might be surprising for many who, use Air, who didn't use Airflow. But Airflow is actually not very good in data processing. It can do some data processing, but it's not very good in that. But Airflow is, is good in one thing only, actually. And this is something that we are very much focusing on, and not to not to try to do more than, than, than this. Uh, Airflow is an excellent orchestrator. Uh, and uh, orchestrate. what does it mean, orchestrator? I'm, uh, I'm a long-term... Uh, choirist, I sang 30 years in the choir, uh, so so I know uh, like how, how music is made, uh, and I was performing. Uh, so when you sing in a choir or in an orchestra, you have to have a conductor. You have to have someone who tells you, uh, not tells but shows you. Okay, now you start, or now the other starts, or things like who is louder, who is uh, who is more more silent. And Airflow is this kind of conductor. Uh, it never does any job. Uh, it looks like, at least. I mean, because like it's easy. Yeah? Like you know, the conductor stays there and just waves the hands, and the music happens. But all the others are singing and or, or, or playing. And this is exactly what happens when when you have Airflow. So Airflow is this kind of orchestrator that simply tells others what to do with the data, and uh, more like kind of who should take the data from and where to put it to and whom to pass it to. Because basically what Airflow does, it, it can talk to these like literally hundreds of different services which, which are out there, like, like Spark as a, as a kind of service that you can run on your, on your machines or any services which are run uh, in, in Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services or any kind of Docker containers running or anything which runs on Kubernetes. So Airflow can talk to all of that. It can speak any language, speak the language of all of those. And this is this is an interesting one. So there, it uses the APIs of all those services and can uh, allow you to build the flow of data of using, using these different services in a manageable way. So it can tell, okay, now, now you do this stuff. Now you do, do the, 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 take the result of what the, the previous uh, step was uh, has done and do another step with it. And then start in parallel three other engines to process the data to get some results. And when they finish, run a fourth one to bring whatever they, they, they did together and produce another result. And all the kind of complex flows of data through the different services. So Airflow does that. So Air Airflow basically does all the uh, scheduling and orchestration of these uh, data flows. It takes like uh, knows like you can write any kind of complex uh, flow of data with Airflow, and you can run it regularly. And this is this is the, this is the those are the only things uh, that Airflow does. Like it allows you to do that and allows you to do that in a very well organized way uh, with very limited effort needed to, to manage those kind of data flows. So if usually when uh, companies are trying to implement these kind of data flows, they implement, they start from like um, bash scripts, 
which are executed on cron jobs regularly and they'll do some processing. And very soon, if the company grows, the flows grows together, the complexity grows, the scripts start to talk to each other and uh, very quickly, nobody knows what's going on. Like if something breaks, it's like a magic what happened. Nobody knows what's, what to do if something breaks. Yeah? Uh, because uh, those were written by different people in different way. Uh, the communication between those different parts is not well designed and all the all the kind of problems that you have when when things are growing and you have to manage complexity uh, and airflow provides you the, the, this kind of language that you can write the the pipelines in the way that uh, that it's manageable so you get like very small number of people managing the whole stuff or huge number of people who are uh, preparing those pipelines so you can have, have like hundreds of people writing your pipelines in, a, in the same way, the same kind of approach, and just one person sitting there and watching all of them like on a big dashboard flowing through the system. And when something breaks, this one person know what, knows what to do to uh, rerun it and fix it when, it when it breaks or to analyze what happens without understanding all the details of all those, those components and services. Yeah. So this is this is what uh, what what airflow is. Jarek, we have a question um, yeah. from somebody in our audience. Ray Escobar asks us if if airflow is similar to pivotal data flow. Oh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'm not familiar with pivotal data flow, but quite likely. I mean, the, that sounds like. I mean, I, I know Py pivotal as a as a company, and quite likely they have something like that. I have. And just exactly a few other examples of uh, of things that work similarly to Airflow, uh, or kind of in the same space uh, that you might be familiar with as well. So it's like it's Luigi, as you see in the screen, Luigi Argo, Uzi. That was a kind of that's kind of historical workflow, also from Apache. Askaban is also uh, also another open source workflow manager. Mm, uh, but it's it's quite likely. Pivotal data flow is uh, is is about uh, similar thing, and and this um, how generic can Airflow be in terms of? I mean, can it only manage data tasks, or or can it manage other type of tasks? Can it be a workflow for other type of tasks? Workflow manager. Ah, uh, that's that's an excellent question. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so uh, the uh, basically what Airflow originally was from, because the, 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 this answer to this question changes a little bit or is going to change a little. Uh, so originally Airflow, Airflow and still uh, Airflow is like excels in that, is uh, there to process data intervals. And this is, this is the important thing. It's like, because there are kind of different solutions like data streaming, for example, when you stream the data and you continuously process that. Airflow doesn't do that, doesn't do streaming continuously, doesn't process the data. It can take data intervals like an hour worth of uh, logs or an hour worth of input from the users, whatever, and process it in a batch and repeat that and process it for another hour, another, another, another. And the same for week, or it can do a weekly processing of data, hourly or every 10 minutes or every, or even like in more complex schedules when you can have like, you know, five days for, for the usual day and two days for a weekend and all the stuff kind of where, where those data intervals are, can, can change. But generally every kind of uh, so-called uh, DAG run, and I'll explain what the DAG is in a moment. So every DAG run is uh, corresponds to a single data interval. It's a very specific thing. So that was the origin of Airflow. Uh, however, uh, um, it, we've migrated and in version 2.2 already uh, we will have that and it will come more of that in 2.3 and later. Uh, we are changing that to do regular more um, to be a little bit more versatile, um, not only to process data intervals, but be able to run some kind of tasks. It is possible today, even, 
and this is this is actually quite a cool uh, thing that we've learned on the Airflow Summit that Airflow, for example, is used uh, by Cloudflare to manage their infrastructure. So they run Airflow pipelines in order to uh, uh, start up, shut down, and maintain their infrastructure. It's not beta. Airflow can do that. It's not very well, like it doesn't excel in that, but it will. Like, like we know what we should do in, in the future to make it go in this direction. And then, then we're going in this direction. So, so while it's not perfect for that today, it can be used this way. And it's going to be even better for that in the future. So the, 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 this, is, this is how it works, how, how, how the, the plans are for now. OK. Good. Um, so what makes Airflow different? Uh, and, and here, uh, it's important to know like uh, why you would like to contribute to Airflow. Uh, there are many workflows that uh, work in the kind of graphical way, where uh, the idea is that you will take people who don't know how to program, you give them a tool to draw the diagrams and uh, link the, the kind of connections between different tasks, and they will be able to edit that. And this is not what Airflow is. <laughs> there are many other tools like that. Uh, not Luigi, but a few others. Argo, for example, and a few others. They, uh, this is the idea, like that you can, you can have a, let's say, business person who can write, write or, or, or data scientist or data analyst who can just uh, drag and drop boxes and connection between them. And this is not what Airflow is. And we think it's not a good idea in general for various reasons, which I tell, I'll, I'll tell a bit uh, later on. Airflow, uh, you program the flows in Airflow by writing Python code. So you don't draw diagrams. The diagrams are and, and the relation between tasks, which I will I'll, you will see in a moment. They are drawn and generated by Airflow from Python code, and this is a, a, a very important thing for 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 Airflow which makes Airflow different than many others, other tools, because uh, you have to be a programmer to develop those, uh, those tasks a little, at least a little. It's not complex. Actually, it's rather simple to write these kind of diagrams or DAG, DAGs. And I'll, uh, uh, I'll tell about DAGs in, on the next slide. Um, but, uh, but you do have to program. You have to write the code. And, and even they like, but, but the idea is that the data scientists and those people who are actually uh, using Airflow, they do know how to write uh, even like maybe simple code or even a little bit complex code. And they, they are capable of doing that. And um, uh, when you have your workflows defined as Python files, this makes it much more, much easier to manage because you can write very, very complex relationships and very, very complex flows by just writing a simple Python program to generate those uh, dependencies and tasks. Uh, otherwise, you would have to click a lot to keep the, those dependencies on. And, mm, uh, and changing and modifying that as it evolves is difficult. With, with Python code, it's easier because you can store it in the versioning system. You can evolve it. You can keep the history. You can make diffs and compare those uh, the, those diagrams or those DAGs uh, before and after the change. And it makes it so much easier to manage that. And this is the whole thing around Airflow. So it, it makes uh, uh, creating the flow a programming effort, which is also an interesting one because it's fun for people like developers, uh, uh, data scientists, maybe maybe a little less because they look more at the data. They, they prefer to look at the data. But for people like engineers, software engineers, uh, developing those diagrams is fun because it's, it's programming. It's nothing more than that. It's programming. You, you program your, your data flows rather than you know drag and drop, which is kind of boring. Um, processing data intervals, I already told. Uh, it can so Airflow basically right now you, you you write a kind of cron specification for if you know what cron is the the the, the, the classic scheduler in in Linux systems uh, 
it's then you can you can write you can you can define the schedules for your jobs in a cron line format but that's actually that's one of the changes that is coming right now in airflow 2.2 you will have much more much easier and much more versatile way of defining your schedules just to give you an example uh, the whole thing the, the whole idea about uh, right uh, like making it more flexible was to make it possible for one of our users who wanted <laughs> who was a real astronomer apparently maybe that's there that, that, that that's a little bit of uh, of uh, urban legend maybe but but I, I think it's it's fine it's 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 part of it it's true so there is a real astronomer and he flies around the the, the globe and he wanted to develop a schedule where uh, uh, with sunrise and sunset of sun, which you can imagine how complex it can be if you have astronomer flying around the the uh, the, 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 the earth, uh, and uh, the idea was to develop the kind of possibility to to give to to to, to create such a schedule for airflow, and uh, and we are very close to releasing it. Uh, then you can define relationships between tasks, as I mentioned before. So you can tell, okay, this task produces data. This type task gets the data. There is a relation. This task will wait for that task. And of course, that's very simplistic because there are much more complex dependencies in relationships. So you can sell, say, for example, okay, if this task fails, this task runs. If this task succeeds, another task runs, and all the kind of complex relationships that you can imagine. Uh, so this is this is all possible in Airflow. And the important thing about Airflow also is that it it scales. It scales from being able to run it on your laptop, as we probably hopefully will see today uh, by the end of the of this of this workshop, that you can set it up and run it locally. Uh, you can run it on a and a powerful machine somewhere on a single machine, just running and, uh, and process a lot of or like orchestrate a lot of external services. It, it is good for that. But if you have a, a literally thousands, tens of thousands of jobs running and tasks, uh, or even hundreds of thousands, which happens because we have our users are, for example, Pinterest. Uh, you can imagine that this is a, a big user or Airbnb, uh, where it all started, or Twitter, uh, or Cloudflare, as I mentioned before. So those are the, the kind of companies that are using Airflow. There, you can have hundreds of thousands of jobs running at the same time, and Airflow can scale to that. This is this is an important part. Like We, we make sure that whatever we do can be scaled very, like almost linearly. Like the, the idea is like to really be able to, to scale uh, a lot. Uh, by just adding new machines and distributing the, the load, distributing the orchestration processing, making it lighter, making it, 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 it possible to run like many, many thousands of jobs at the same time. This is also one of the changes that, just, that is coming right now in Airflow 2.2. There will be a class of those uh, uh, scale uh, behaviors when you are actively changed, when currently you actively check if something happened, for example, when you are waiting for something to happen. So this was kind of, if you have many of those, it took a lot of resources so far, but we are making the asynchronous change that will make it uh, super efficient, that you will be able to run hundreds of thousands of tasks on a single node, literally. Uh, so this is this is a, a big change that is coming. So this scale, this scale the scalability uh, works and you can run it in the cloud. There are uh, several um, several uh, providers uh, or uh, of managed service for uh, Airflow managed services. So there is Google Cloud, uh, one which is Composer. There is Astronomer, who is the biggest stakeholder. And I also like, uh, they also pay for part of my time. So they, they, they provide an Airflow as a service. And there is a, a AWS uh, managed managed workflow for, for Apache Airflow. So those are managed services that you can uh, simply, as a user, you can just start and uh, start using. Because as I mentioned before, Airflow is a little bit complex to set up and run. And especially if you want to run a distributed version of it, uh, it's 
probably easier to get it managed if you don't have people who can manage the whole infrastructure for you. Uh, so it run, runs both like kind of development locally, but also it can scale and it can run, it can be run on, on, on cloud or any cloud. Uh, any questions so far? Does anyone has uh, any questions and really interrupt me? I, I would love to, to hear more questions and be able to answer them rather than talk a lot <laughs> on my own. <laughs> so if you have any questions, feel free. Mm. Okay, I already talked about these uh, milestones, uh, Airbnb uh, incubating top-level project. Uh, but the important thing, and also uh, it, is, it is one of the most popular orchestrators out there, I would say. Uh, we don't have hard numbers for that because we don't track our users, but uh, judging from Airflow Summit, 10,000 people, I think it's, it's quite a lot and by the caliber of people who, who are using it, and a caliber of companies as well. Uh, in September 2021, we checked, um, uh, we became the most contributed Apache Software Foundation project, the most contributed. In terms of we have, we passed Apache Spark, which you probably know uh, the name as well. It's, it's very popular uh, processing, uh, data processing tool, uh, and we passed 1,700 contributors because we are also very open to new contributors. We, we like the workshop we run here. We, we, we like to have users, our users to contribute. We have a small group of people who contribute regularly and then uh, a lot of contributors who contribute uh, less regularly or rarely, uh, but yeah, we passed 1,700. Uh, and in our flow summit, we have 2020, we had we had 10,000 attendees. Jarek, is that number like the historic of different contributors or that 1700? Does that mean that along the airflow history, yes. uh, 1700 yes. different people have made a contribution to the 1700 GitHub. along the, uh, the whole history? Uh, which is like uh, uh, showing a, uh, on a regular basis, like every month. Yeah, you see like between 100 and 130 people, maybe 150, it's, it's fluked away, so, yeah, but we have more than 100 people contributing every month, let's say. But then 1700 is, uh, is something uh, all over the history. And I think it's more because I'm, I'm not, I haven't checked but you can check you can check Pedro how many we have now it's on the on the first page of overflow on the github awesome. uh, but it was 1730 a few days ago when i checked last time and it changes by day basically and then in in latin america i know that uh, rapi is a big user i believe uh -huh. uh, rapi is a big user of airflow um I'll think of others in mind, but yes, I know that, um, and in Brazil is also used uh, by several large companies. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have lots of users all over the places, uh, uh, from from US to China, all the Europe, Africa as well. This is this is uh, Australia. This is very 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 is very popular. Some basics about airflow, like how 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 does it work? Uh, so we have th those DAGs. I mentioned before the name several times. DAG is the is a directed acyclic graph, which is uh, 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 just a graph which goes in one direction without cycles. So you cannot just go and repeat the same thing or go back in the, in the middle. And one execution of of a flow of a data interval currently. Uh, is the, to go through the DAG and execute all the tasks which should which belong to that uh, to that uh, DAG. So DAG consists of tasks, and each task. And again, going back a little, uh, Airflow doesn't do stuff; or it just tells others. So most of those tasks is really reaching out to some other service and telling, "Okay, do that, do this, get the data from here, put it there." Uh, 
uh, and pass it to the other component. Uh, so that, that's what Airflow does. And, and the task is no more than that usually, although there are some exceptions. So there are some cases where Airflow connects to, to, to service and the data flows through Airflow, for example. But it's 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 rather rare. Usually, it's like the the services are talking to each other, and just Airflow tells them how they they should talk to each other, and ex exchanges the data, or helps to exchange the data. But what is a task? Uh, and this is also the the beauty if you are a Python programmer. As I mentioned before, the DAGs are our Python code, and the same with tasks. Uh, is, is a Python code, like the tasks are just objects uh, or functions even, because we have several ways of defining those, those tasks. Uh, they are Python classes or functions, basically. And that's it. Uh, and everything in, in <laughs> this, is, this is the cool stuff. Everything in Airflow is Python. Uh, and, and you can do whatever you want. If you know Python, if you know any kind of libraries, you can write any kind of task in, in Airflow. If there is a service which provides a Python API, you can write a, a very nice, simple wrapper around that uh, following Airflow kind of concepts and build uh, an operator uh, or task. Uh, uh, oper I'll tell uh, what operator is in a moment. So that, that you can build a task around uh, that you can use in your DAG. And the nice thing is also that there is no distinction between those people who write the, the, the tasks themselves and write the DAGs. They are all Python programmers. So you can both communicate and write a very complex service to communicate with using API to the external service, but the same Python skills are used to put them together in a DAG. So we program the DAG, so we get, get the tasks and and uh, and connect them together using the same Python. So like it, everything, everything, everything you do except the UI in Airflow is is written in Python. And the UI is is uh, a mixture of HTML, JavaScript, CSS as as usual. So there are different kinds of tasks, and I mentioned before that we have like lots and lots of different services that we can talk to, and there are different kinds. Uh, so uh, there are several types of tasks. There are operators, sensors, and transfers. So operators do stuff. They process the data. Sensors are waiting for something to happen. So those are the, the kind of things that I, I mentioned about optimizing. There are transfers. So those are those the third type of, of, of tasks that can pass the data between two different uh, services and, and the data flows through Airflow. Uh, and those tasks can be very specialized. So for example, uh, we have more than 70 providers, we call that this way. Those are uh, services with or ta tasks or operators or uh, groups of classes that uh, you can use to talk to specific service, for example, Spark, Redis, or um, Salesforce, Snowflake, Azure, Postgres. You can, it's like you, you just use it. You just, for example, for Postgres, you write an SQL query, you said run, this is the result. And, and it's, it's ready, it's, it's specialized for Postgres uh, or specialized for Spark or Kubernetes. And, and this is the power of Airflow as well. And that's something that for you, for future contribution, if you know some service, if you know, if you've been working on, on, on any kind of like Slack, uh, uh, Yandex. I'm, I'm just mentioning like Alibaba. Uh, th those are the re recently added kind of contributions to Airflow. Uh, if you are familiar with any kind of external service that Airflow can talk to, the easiest contribution is to write a, a specialized operator for that. This is very simple because the operator is a, uh, is a, is like usually very simple class with one execute method. There is a bit com of com complexity hidden, like there is a hook, for example, which a hook which is uh, talking to the external service, and then there were like API implementation you have to implement, and then operator uses that hook, and those are like two classes you have to write, write the the API, and that's pretty much it, uh, and then you can contribute that back, and that's fantastic, like that, like wow, 
we have a new service that we can use. Of course, it has to be popular. It's kind of popular service because like we don't want to have and manage like thousands of, of unpopular services. But we now have more than 70. I think it's getting the last one, which we are adding right now. I'm a release manager for providers and we have like influx, influx DB. And this is the, the most recent, recently added uh, provider. Uh, and and this is like a huge opportunity for contribution, even if you don't know Airflow, because this interface is very simple. Just usually like one method, just, you know, call and get the result. That's it. Uh, and you don't have to know Airflow to, to test it. You don't have to know Airflow to, to, to contribute anything. But if you know this external service, you can, you can just, just uh, uh, test it and uh, execute and contribute and let others use the, that service very easily. And there are also some general purpose operators. So you don't, you are not limited to those ready to use operators, but you can also uh, dynamically write a Python code, which becomes an operator or dynamically write a, a bash or run your Python code in a virtual environment. Or if you have a Docker container, uh, you can, uh, and the image, you can run this image as a task, or you can even run a Kubernetes pod if you are into Kubernetes. So Airflow is very, very versatile in terms of like, you, you can either use those ready to make components or you can write your own components or you, and you can put them together or you can use any kind of services like Docker, Kubernetes or uh, uh, to, 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 to run whatever you need. And that makes it so kind of powerful because it different kinds of user finds it easy to use depending on like what they are used to and, and how they, they, they want to work. Uh, with Airflow. And even you can write those DAX and tasks in a functional way. We have this possibility. So, so if you are into functional programming, uh, uh, it's like originally Airflow is more like kind of object oriented, kind of, because you can create classes. But now you can also write them in a, in a decorating function. If you are into functional programming, that's, you, you find it, find yourself at home. Some other stuff. Uh, some other components that you, I will not go into details of uh, because they are uh, uh, like you don't, and you don't have to know everything even to contribute, as I mentioned before. But there are some, in, or, in order to make this works, there are some internal components that uh, are uh, implemented, like cross task communication. We have a specialized way of how the, the tasks are exchanging the data. There, there are some di different kinds of executors that you can run Airflow with. Uh, so you can either run it locally or you can use Celery if you know Celery from Python. This is kind of queuing mechanism. Uh, you can use Kubernetes uh, to run Airflow if you, if you are uh, into Kubernetes. Uh, there, there are debug kind of executors as well. And that's something that we will maybe see today even during the... Um, the uh, like showing the uh, the demo or the kind of workshop part hands on, uh, uh, and there is a the, the central part of Airflow is the scheduler because scheduler makes sure that everything is running. This is like the kind of central part which it has to be very performant. It schedules you can schedule like hundreds of thousands of DAGs and execute them through the executors, uh, and that's. That's, those are the, 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 the components, but we'll, I will not go too much into details of that. Just tell you, uh, show you that I don't want to scare you, <laughs> but it just to tell you that this, this kind of system, it is complex. It has a number of parts, especially when it goes through the distributed uh, system, but also just to make it very clear, we try to make this this kind of development environment as easy pos uh, as possible to start with, so that you don't have to know all of that, but you will be able to test Airflow and run it locally very easily and develop or develop it, even though it consists of this many many parts. Like there is an executor, there is a scheduler, there is a database, there is a folder with uh, with DAGs which has to be synchronized. There is a web server which writes logs. There are workers which are pro Pro, uh, processing yeah there, there are some uh, so so this is how the distributed airflow looks like 
but also the very very small down stream down version of it uh, can be run for for the development and this is this is something that i will show you so that you don't get scared on the other hand i mean you know that you can develop something on your local machine local development environment and it will be working in this kind of distributed uh, huge system as well okay uh mm, We'll not use Slack channel today because we have different communication channels. So we have this channel for uh, for 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 Zoom, on Zoom. Uh, I don't think we will be breaking groups, breaking to different groups today uh, because we don't have this uh, this kind of uh, prerequisites done before. So we will start from uh, from contribute from from setting up the development environment and we'll see how it goes. Maybe maybe we will hope. Maybe maybe others will be able to set up their environment today as well. That would be fantastic. Uh, but if not, this is not a problem. You can still have time to contribute after that. Uh, I will ask, so who, who, who wanted to, um, uh, to share their screen? So uh, I will ask the person who wanted to share the screen to share it, but others will be able to share them as well if they have, if they want to try it on their own and, and have problems then we can, you know, I learned from your experience uh, and, and we can try to solve the problems together. Uh, and again, asking questions anytime. Mm, okay. So, um, okay. I, don't know. I, I have pasted the steps in the chat. I don't know if anybody has followed them. Uh, Daniel Torres. Uh, no, actually, it was Diego Servin who was interested. Uh, and so, Diego, do you want? Because maybe we can uh, just switch. The, I, I'll show how to set up the development environment first. Because then, the next step, I, I, the next things that I would like to, I, I talked a lot about the airflow itself. So maybe now we can do something. Maybe like first of all, five minute break, maybe for kind of technical break. Uh, in the moment, uh, but after that we can start and you can share the screen and we can go through the setting up the development environment. Okay, and if you want, I can. If nobody else wants to, I can share my screen and we can do it with my computer. Ah, do you have I will. I would like to share my screen. Oh, it's, awesome! It's... Who is it? Who said? Uh, Diego. Okay, well, Diego. Uh, you don't know to speak very good English. Don't worry, I'll help you out. Uh, if you have any. Si tienes pregunta con dudas con algún paso, yo te ayudo. Okay. Jar Thank Jarek you. and me will be helping you out. Awesome. Yes. So, okay. uh, shall we do a break? Is a, I don't know if we need a break right now. I mean, maybe maybe we don't. Uh, uh, what do you think, Pedro? Should we make a short break or shall we start already? I guess let's start already. Okay, let's start. I'll stop sharing. Uh, and I'll just uh, maybe you can share your screen and we can go I'm, to the yes I'll I'm gonna give permissions to Diego give me one second I need promote I need to promote Diego to panelist and now that Diego is a panelist I'm going to Diego, ya deberías poder compartir tu pantalla. ¿Puedes intentarlo? Sí, dice que ah, all no. participant screen sharing. Sí, perdón, perdón. Son dos pasos. Primero te tengo que ser panelista y ahora te tengo que ser co-host. Ya, y ya estás. Intenta okay, otra vez, por favor. Ok, ya me dejó. Ok. ¿Qué estás usando, Diego? Estás usando... Eh, tengo un PyCharm. By Charm. ¿Y qué sistema operativo? Which operating system? Windows. Yes. Windows. And do you use, uh, do you have WSL installed? Windows no, system for Linux? Eh, no, I don't have it. Ah, Jarek, can we use the, the PowerShell or it's much better to use uh, WSL, uh, right? That won't work too, too well. Yeah, we do need... Uh, WSL, I think. Otherwise, we'll have issues. Sí, Diego, necesitamos tener Windows Subsystem for Linux. No lo tienes habilitado, ¿verdad? 
No estoy seguro. Es que en otra computadora sí, pero no sé si aquí. Creo que sí lo tengo. A ver. No estoy seguro. Lo más que no lo he usado bien. ¿Es este? Sí, es ese. Eh, nada más. WSL2, I think. Yeah, we need WSL2, right, Jarek? Yes. yes. Uh, WSL2. Oh, I think that I don't have it. Yeah, we. We. We could migrate it, but that may take some time. And we may have yeah. some issues. No, it's better than someone else. Share the screen. Okay. Do we have any other volunteer? I have Linux. Somebody, Hugo said that. Hugo. Okay, Hugo. Let's try it and see. I'm going to give permissions to Hugo. And it, it will look the same with WSL too, because it's just Linux, which is run on the on the Windows box. But it, it unfortunately it requires Linux uh, or of, of or Mac OS. Give me one second. Okay, you go. I'm promoting you to panelist, and then I'm giving you co-host permissions. Hugo. Ok, creo que ya está. Ok, Hugo. ya te oímos y si puedes intentar compartir pantalla. Uh -huh. okay. ¿Tienes Python instalado, Hugo? Sí, uso normalmente Conda. Ok, so Hugo uses Conda. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, so should work. Ok, we see the screen now. Okay, good. So uh, I typed in also the the link to the contributor quick start in the in the in the chat. Okay. You find the the the, 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 the place to uh, that we can you know like has has all the documentation to uh, to follow uh, and it would be easier to copy paste stuff from there, I think. Uh, so if you can get. Uh, uh, get this uh, handy. I don't know if you have two screens, uh, but yeah, I've got two screens. Let me just share the other part. Yeah, so like the, the, just 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 keep it on uh, handy. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So that you can you can copy paste from there. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, Linux do you have? What is it? It's Ubuntu twenty. Ah, good. Yeah, twenty dot one, I think. Okay, cool. So. Uh, I think there is uh, like the first first thing that you should start because uh, the the is, is to install if you don't have it is to install Docker and Docker Compose. So if you look at this, I link, think I've, I've got them installed already. Okay, can can we check like just run Docker yes yeah. and see if it works? Uh, version and Docker PS to see to see the the processes if you have all the permissions. Like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's good. You don't have any Docker uh, running. That's good. Uh, and do you have Docker Compose also installed? I'm not um, sure. Okay, can you just type Docker Docker dash like compose, uh, okay. Docker dash compose? Uh -huh. uh, okay, just install it. Uh, although I think we need a little bit newer version one one twenty five zero one. Probably it's better, and I think it's uh, it is in the uh, in the instructions. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is the installation of the latest latest version. There is a script to install it. Uh, okay. uh, so you can, there is on the on the second page of this uh, contributors quick start, which I'll show you. Yes, second page. Uh, like Docker Compose. Uh, it's, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see it. So it will just install, get the right, right version for you. Uh, you need to have to um, install it, and then you will get the latest version. And this is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, without the dollar. Yeah. Okay. And then this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I'm not sure if it will all work because uh, fast because of the it depends a little bit on the on the network speed. The the first setup will take a little bit of time, but that's the only the first one. Yeah. Okay. So let's, mm -hmm. okay. And now try Docker Compose version and see if yeah. it works. Yes. Two zero one. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's going to work because that's a very, very okay. new version, which was, uh, I, I didn't even know that it is released for uh, for Linux yet. But let's let's see, we're living on the edge, right? If not, we, now we know what we can contribute. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, uh, literally like maybe four or five days ago, uh, I merged the fix uh, to make it work for Docker Compose 0 and I hope it's going to work. Good. Uh, now uh, there is uh, uh, you will re require a little bit of packages installed, especially for Git and all the others. And there is a, this pyenv and setting setting up virtual env. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you can try to whether you can install all of those packages. And it's Debian, so it should 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 yeah. be should should be installed nicely. All right. Okay. Okay, that's no, not not very slow. It's okay. Looks like it's pretty. It's getting so. So with with this, we are just making sure that we have the kind of full development environment, so that just to also a bit uh, give you a little bit of information on the complexity of Airflow, we are supporting three different databases. Uh, four, like four, is, is is being released now. So SQLite. Postgres, MySQL, and MSSQL is coming. Uh, we support four different Python version, Python 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9. Uh, and uh, since we have these 70 integrations uh, or 70 <laughs> providers, we do, sub we do have a number of like integration tests that require some extra stuff uh, like Cassandra or Spark or a number of other things. Yeah, and that would be kind of nightmare to set it all up on your own. So the environment that we are preparing right now is really making it easy. Uh, like you will get just a lot of things working for you, all the databases, everything for you working for you. But you need to do this kind of setup. Uh, okay, lib MySQL client. Okay, it's oh, it doesn't work for this version, but uh, I'm not. That's weird. Because I build essentials, I think I already have it installed. Uh huh. I need to look uh, at build essentials. Uh, that's strange. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Like, just have. Just, just try to install build essentials like that, or maybe, maybe. Um, uh, yeah. Python version, which Python version are you? In which environment are you in? I'm. Um, I. Let's see. Let's try and see. Um, I think I've got. Yeah, three point eight and. I okay, got the other one. Three, three, three dot eight is enough because we don't, you don't have to have all those um, environment uh, installed, all the different versions. So if you have, I think it should be fine because you don't, you don't yeah, it's fine. Uh, whatever, whichever version, like we support three six, three seven, three eight, three nine, all, the, all of that is good. Uh, okay, there is um, there are some instructions or setting up pyenv, but since you are using conda, it's probably not going to be needed because you are using conda to speak with environment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, now you definitely need, uh, and I, I'm not sure if it's written there, but you definitely need to clone the Airflow uh, environment. Uh, yeah. Uh, Airflow. If Airflow. M. Yeah. Where is it? So uh, maybe also you can sh show the the, 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 the the browser. So when you go to the Apache Airflow repository uh, in GitHub, uh, there is this Git, the, the code green button in there. And then you will get the URL, uh, either HTTP yeah. or SSH to, to, get, uh, uh, to get the stuff. 
yeah. I usually use use SSH, but for that you need to have a SSH set up for uh, for uh, for uh, for GitHub, and maybe it's easier for uh, to start with HTTPS. Yeah, I paired with HTTPS already. Um, but I'm not sure what I'm showing you. Um, we're seeing your screen uh, with the browser. Apache Flow, yeah, your browser with the Apache Flow repository. And should he fork it first or cloning it? Uh, cloning is fine first, uh, that's, that's okay. But in the meantime, indeed, uh, in order to contribute to Airflow, and that, that's an important step, and uh, that's uh, come back, you need to fork the repository. Okay. Because you are not able to uh, yeah. push the, yeah, yeah. the repo. So maybe you can do it now. I mean, uh, All I'll right. log in your account or GitHub. No, yeah. no, but, but, but cloning is fine. It, it, just continue cloning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right, well, I'll just clone that and yes. also work it in, the, in here. And then I will show you how to connect both because it's best if you have both Apache uh, Airflow repository as so-called remote and uh, and your own as well because 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 you will have to push to your own repository. So if you if you go to the uh, to the code button again and you see the URL, so this is your private uh, URL. Yeah. Okay. So once it is cloned, uh, which might take a little, let's see where we are. It's it it seems slow initially, but I think well, I, could... I remember it speeds up uh, fairly uh, fast after fifty percent usually. <laughs> okay, we can leave it. I mean, let's leave it uh, downloading for a bit. No worries. We can actually check how we're doing on questions in the meantime. Mm -hmm. If we have any it's, comments or questions. Yeah, it will be, it, it, it looks slow initially, but I think, yeah, it, it, it will speed up in a moment. Usual, that, that's my experience at least. And uh, all right. one thing also here, uh, you do need uh, to be a little uh, uh, patient initially when you set up Airflow, because we download a lot of stuff uh, for um, uh, Docker Compose setup in a moment. Uh, but we can, uh, like, uh, we'll, do, we'll do that later. Yes, it's, the repo is quite large, isn't it? All right. It is, uh, 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 yeah, you have a lot of commits. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and. I suppose the repo has airflow, like all the history, right? Airflow one yes. and, uh, and everything. Okay. Yes, yes. You can clone it much faster if you just do like kind of shallow cloning, only yes. one last commit, for example, but then you will not have yeah. all the history. It's better to, to clone it all, all of it. And there are lots of things in there. And uh, just, just a word of warning while it is being downloaded and don't even try, or maybe if you're super brave, you can uh, in general. Uh, don't even try to read all of the documentation and understand all the project. Oh, no, don't worry. <laughs> it's uh, huge. Like for me, it took about like, you know, maybe three, four months because before I got kind of, you know, maybe not even uh, uh, comfortable is my like, I, I knew what I was doing, yeah, but it doesn't, it shouldn't prevent you from doing like small contribution from day one. So the whole idea is like, even the whole project is huge. Uh, it should be very easy to take some parts of it uh, and contribute uh, small things without knowing all of it and learning it uh, along the way. Yeah, that's, that's an important one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually, <laughs> that's the funny thing. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm trying to pass Caxil in the number of commits. Uh, uh, it's how much? It's like 26 
okay, it's getting better, getting yeah. better because I used to have like 30 uh, difference. So I'm, I'm getting closer and closer. A little more lines. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like the best software engineer removes lines, not that's so I'm not the best one actually <laughs> because I add too many lines of codes uh, and especially in the code base like airflow is right now it's uh, it's better than things are removed than added because that makes it simpler yeah okay uh, let's see where we are uh, with the download mm. It's going really slowly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe if I, if I... Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe I can, in the meantime, let's wait until it happens and I will tell you more about the contribution work, uh, workflow, how, how it looks like. Uh, so uh, stop sharing for now. I will uh, observe how it is, is going and I will, I will tell more and go back to the presentation and I will tell you how, what happens. I mean, leave it downloading, yeah. but yeah, just and share your screen. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm sharing mine. Just a moment. Okay, there it goes. Present. Um, uh, so, so what? How? How? How the contribution looks like to open source projects, and that might be also interesting to. Um, to learn uh, from the human point of view, because <laughs> this is this is important. Like we will tell, uh, we will try to do the to set up the the, the hardcore like a con development environment and then, and how to de develop the code. But actually, almost all the work that you do uh, in, in in contributing to open source, although not not almost all, but a lot of the work is to communicate with others. This might be surprising for uh, regular software developer developers who are used to just write code, <laughs> uh, and uh, like, uh, and you might think that software development is writing code, uh, but it's not. I mean, it's not only that, or not even most of it. I would say in in many cases. So in many cases, it's just communicating with others and agreeing what to do working with them uh, remotely, usually in open source, and uh, agreeing to how we are doing stuff and implementing it. It's very rare that you just write code and it gets uh, approved uh, in Airflow. It almost doesn't happen. Uh, like that must be a very, very, very small change because we are very, very keen on making sure that our project is uh, maintainable in the future that we keep it under the control uh, in terms of like we know that at any point of time any of us can make any changes there uh, and uh, whenever you contribute code this is this is an important uh, thing that not everyone realizes that code is uh, often a liability not an asset if you if you know what it means from for, for English it's kind of sometimes the code can be a burden to maintain. So we don't need more code, we need good code. <laughs> we need the code that we understand and that we can maintain and the code that, uh, that uh, brings our project forward. Even the Apache Software Foundation motto, uh, the, the, can, the most important motto that you can hear on, in Apache Software uh, uh, Apache Software Foundation is community over code. Uh, like the, the idea is that we don't get the great code and make the project out of that. It doesn't work. You just need to get great people working together and code is the result of it. And that's, but that's the kind of byproduct almost. Yeah. And, and this is something that especially people who are not experienced in development, especially in the kind of environment which is not like corporate uh, and, and kind of like <laughs> so, some, some like somebody who is not a coder but developer, that a lot of this is, is communication. Uh, and a lot of this is, is being building community and people working together. Uh, and I've learned most of it uh, while <laughs> 
contributing to 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 airflow and other open source mostly airflow to open source projects so it's not a not something that i knew 10 years ago i know that now but it took me a long time to learn actually uh, so uh, what's the workflow uh, first of all and uh, that's already what you have done uh, you need to fork airflow uh, called uh, repository because uh, only maintainers like myself and other committers uh, can uh, push the code to the repository of Airflow. They can merge the code, but even we don't, we cannot merge, uh, we cannot push the code to the main branch and the release branches because they are protected. We always need to have somebody else to look at our code and approve that. So even I, I cannot, I have no permission to push the code to the repository on my own. I have to have somebody who reviews that and uh, and confirms that whatever I'm pushing is okay. And this is very important for security reasons, very important for code quality reasons, for making sure that what we are doing is good, making sure that uh, others understand that, uh, and that this is something that is maintainable in the future. So that's why forking is, is super important. We cannot and this is forbidden, like this is like a policy from Apache Software Foundation. We cannot really get a non-contributor to have access directly to the code, no, non-committer, sorry. Uh, I'll tell a little bit about the committership and, and how it works, but committers, those people who have the more permissions, uh, uh, they, they the only ones uh, who can write to the, uh, to the, to the main repository and everything has to come from forks of the, of the people who are contributing. Uh, in order to contribute, you need to configure environment. And this is what's gonna be, what we are going to be do doing next as the second point. And there are kind of like, let's say three components to it right now. So first of all is the virtual environment, which is good for local development uh, and connecting it to, the, to your IDE to be able to code. Mm -hmm. Then second one is like the Breeze, uh, uh, which is this Dockerized environment, which has a very, very important property uh, because it is the same for everyone in working in the project. So Breeze, uh, the whole thing about the Breeze is to avoid the kind of works for me syndrome yeah? because Airflow is so complex and it has so many dependencies. And no matter how hard you try, your environment is always different than the other environment if you just install Airflow like a Python dependency because you have different versions. We have more than 500 dependencies, literally. This is like one of the most complex projects I ever saw in terms of dependencies. And I'm, I'm managing all of that. I'm the, I'm the release manager for, for all the dependencies and providers. And I developed the whole system to manage that. And it, it's, it's like super complex uh, and being able to like, if somebody works for me, it, I'm not sure if it works for you if you don't have the same environment. So Breeze is this kind of environment which is in Docker, which is very easy to maintain and keep the same for everyone. So uh, you can run tests there. And I know if I run tests on my version, uh, okay, I see it's done the downloading. Okay, well, I'll switch, switch in a moment. So uh, uh, so uh, we have this, um, so, so I, I know when it works for me, when you use the same, like when you pull Breeze, when you, when you synchronize Breeze and run it, you should get exactly the same result. What's even more important, you get exactly the same result on our CI, because our CI uses the same Breeze environment to run all the tests. So this is the second kind of setup that we, that we have to do. And uh, the third one, which is super helpful uh, and something that I love and I teach everyone who, uh, who, who is new to programming and new to this kind of review commit and uh, and whole process of of, of contribution is pre-commit. This is a fantastic framework about being able to run a number of verifications on your change before you actually make a pull request. Uh, so before you even send the, uh, the the PR to review, we have like a lot of checks that can tell you, okay, this is this this code looks good yeah and this is also something that that you can do before commit pre-commit okay i'm uh, stop share stopping sharing and we can switch to your screen now 
Uh, who go? Yeah. Okay, good. And let me just switch to my document there. Okay, contributors, quick start. Okay, so you, you are done downloading, you have the Airflow repo. Now, um, I'm not sure if it is very well described in the quick contribution guide, not necessarily. Uh, 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 can you type git remote to show the remotes you have? Uh, git remote uh, and even git remote minus V. Yeah. Git remote git minus remote V. What? Verbal, minus V, like verbos. Yeah, so now you have uh, uh, just the airflow connected as a remote. And now, uh, if you copy paste the URL to your remote, uh, uh, you can just add your own remote uh, there so that you can push to the to the repository of yours rather than, than to, to Apache Airflow. So, um, all right. That will be something like we remote uh, add yeah. and then the name that you want to give it and the I, yes i usually okay. give, give the same name i give my username like the same as in github just yeah exactly and then that and then the url the url yep all right yep and then you can fetch uh, git fetch uh, and then the give give name of your user there okay. git fetch like that like a cycle block yes but it you have a typo yeah uh that's that's why and it will be fast because it's the same clone so it will be yep. very very quick just a sync yeah that's it mm. yeah so now now you are ready with the cloned repo uh, and the next step would be uh Setting up the let me see uh, develop using PyCharm. Are you using PyCharm, IntelliJ, or or any kind of other tools? Not really. I usually use Atom. Okay, that's fine. That's that will work too. <laughs> no problem with that. Uh, I use VI quite often. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's me. Uh, but uh, for now, what you uh, want to do, you have the environment, uh, the environment, the virtual environment. Uh, I can like create one. Setup, yeah, I create one. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not very familiar with Conda, by the way. I know how I know that it's there. Uh, I hope it's going to work with the virtual and created by Conda. I, so, I hope so. <laughs> it should, it should. There should be no big difference. Mm -hmm. I, I usually use PyEnv, and this is something that uh, that we also have uh, much more. It's, it's setting up with Python 3.9. Uh, will that be an issue? Not at all. OK. I didn't know there was Python 3.9. <laughs> yeah, we are about to get support for 3.10 in a few months or a few weeks, maybe even. Because it's, it's, it's really uh, fast now developing the new versions. It's very well organized, by the way. OK, so activate the environment. Mm -hmm. I think I could have just created one out of the file, mm -hmm. like straight out of the file. Yeah, 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 yeah it could be. And now uh, just install Airflow. Uh, and I think for uh, initial setup, devil will be enough. So I'll, I'll just type you, it is, it is described in, um, in the contributor guide, but I'll just type it in the chat here, maybe. So there is like the, the, the command to, in, to install Airflow will be something like pit install Airflow dot okay uh, devil let's see how it goes 
so what it does, it install uh, Airflow from the local uh, uh, source, which we checked out for a local repository. Uh, and uh, it installs it with so-called extras. Okay. Uh, so uh, Airflow has a number of configurable extras. So all these providers, every provider has its own extra. So you can install uh, Google uh, libraries. Cloud, yeah. Yeah, or uh, Amazon or something. And this devil, uh, it just creates or, or, or installs all the extras for a number of things which are needed for development environment. And it will install all the providers. It will take a little bit of time because it is, as I mentioned, the Airflow has five, 500, uh, more than 500 dependencies. Uh, and managing it is kind of, kind of, kind of complex. Uh, but once you install it, it should be, uh, you should be able to run some basic tests in it in the virtual. End. But again, as I mentioned before, because of this number of dependencies, you are never sure if your environment is the same as others. So that's why this, this virtual env is only one of the ways of, of installing it uh, and, uh, and not the best. I mean, it is, if you are using IDE like PyCharm or, 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 or VS Code or IntelliJ, mm, then installing this local virtual env is good for the kind of uh, integration with with those yeah because you can connect this this python interpreter to your ide run your yeah. test from debugger and all the stuff which is actually fairly very useful and it's it's very easy to operate but again in in case of uh, running the the tests before you <laughs> before you commit it to the, or send it to the repository as pull request, it's best to run it, uh, all the tests in Breeze in this, in this Dockerized environment, because then you are sure that this environment is exactly the same as, as all the others. So we can let it running or maybe. Oh, what's going on here? Um... Some things might not work, yes, because they might, I can, you can scroll a little bit up. MySQL. So that's the problem with the MySQL library, which you weren't yeah. installed. Uh, and for that, I think you do need to install MySQL. And I'm not sure in Deb Debian how it would be. Um, MySQL client. Yeah. So just just to just to give you perspective. Exactly, this kind of problems make it so uh, brittle to have the whole environment, in, you know, installed on your different machines. Because imagine you can have similar problems for uh, uh, for macOS, but there will be different kinds of problem. Uh, and usually, you can, yeah, you know, what you actually can do, you can install the LibMariaDB. I think it should work or MySQL client dev. It's actually uh, uh, this, uh, those, uh, you have this, uh, yeah, it just, just, just install the lib MySQL client dev. Um, this it's, one? No, no, uh, lib, lib MySQL client. Okay. Dev. So there is this, uh, just above the first error, you can see the proposals that you have. There are four proposals. And choose the, the second one. The, yeah, exactly. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Okay, this one. Yes. Yep. Okay. So now I do that again. Yeah, and then install also SQLite. Uh, so the first part, I, I don't know if it, it has been um, installed. Uh, SQLite. So, yes, SQLite simply. Uh, I,
Hmm? Yep. Okay, okay, so now I now should I yes. keep trying to uh, install the other ones? Yep. Uh, just just install now try. Let's see. Uh, install the devil, the, the, the airflow with devil. Uh, what? And uh, it should install better. Uh, no, uh, the... no, no, pip install, pip uh, install, install devil. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Let it install. That one. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be faster every time because we already have uh, most of them cached uh, locally. So hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff is being installed. As you see, Kubernetes, like literally half of the internet is downloaded <laughs> right? by uh, by this in terms of the, <laughs> the dependencies. Uh, we are actually just just as an anecdote, we uh, we actually broke. Uh, or we were broken by pip uh, release uh, 2.3, uh, I believe, uh, because we have so complex dependencies that uh, pip didn't handle them well when, when they released a new version of it. And we had a big and hard time talking to the guys from pip to, to fix it, because at some point of time, Airflow stopped being installed. Insta uh, it, you couldn't install Airflow with pip. Uh, uh, because because it was not able to handle all the dependencies, and uh, and uh, what what happened eventually we fixed the problems. So we worked together with the pip, and now one of the pip maintainers is one of the most active committers in Apache Airflow. Uh, and because we got friendly, we, even though like we you know kind of maybe not shouted at each other, but we were not very pleasant initially. Uh, because because they created a lot of problems for us, but now he we are we are we are friends and working together, and he's actually also paid for contributing to to Apache Airflow by, by astronomer, and, and and that's that's actually quite cool. Uh, so yeah, as you see, a lot of things are happening in in here. So I, I, maybe I can uh, let's wait until it it finishes, and I'll I'll switch and continue a little bit about the contribution. Okay. That, that will take a, a little, especially with NumPy and others. Uh, Should I stop sharing, right? Yep. And I'll switch. Uh, OK, let me just share. OK. By, by the way, I'm also uh, using Linux, of course. And I have Mint in my case. Uh, good. So, uh, so when you create these environments uh, and we will get back to it in, uh, in a moment and install pre-commit. So you will have all the tools that I mentioned. Tools are there to help you and uh, the code is there to, to write, to be written, but the most important is connecting with people. And if you go to airflow.apache.org, so this is the, the our website, airflow.apache.org, the HTTP in front. So if you go there, uh, you will find an, a, a lot of information, documentation for the project, information about the project, but project. But there is an, a super important uh, tab for you, which is uh, community. Uh, uh, and I'll I'll just show you here. So and it's first actually, yeah, because the community over code. This is the most important part. Uh, I'll just make it a little bit bigger for everyone. Yeah, so uh, so the community is it is explained here how to uh, connect with the community because you you cannot work alone you cannot be as uh, a lone wolf in, in in projects like Airflow you have to be with the community so the the important the, the most important part it's kind of more most serious part. The most the thing that everything has to be announced, everything, all the discussions has to be brought here, is the dev list. So developer list. This is a, a, a rather important um, uh, communication mechanism or method uh, in terms of in Apache Airflow Foundation, uh, Apache Software Foundation. There is the saying: if it didn't happen on the dev list. 
it didn't happen, which means that you cannot make important decisions for the project by talking to others if you didn't send the message and if you didn't discuss it on the developer list. The developer list, even if it's kind of old fashioned, because uh, uh, you know all the communication uh, is done by sending emails, uh, uh, it's slow and that's good. Uh, the any kind of serious changes, ideas, proposals have to be go to the go to the mailing list because everyone has to have a chance to participate in that. All the other channels can be busy. There have be can be a lot of information, but for the dev list is there and user list. So the, those two two mailing lists, which are kind of slowest and more important, most important and. Whatever you do, you should, uh, whenever you start contributing to Airflow, you should subscribe to the mailing list. And here is uh, explained how to do that. Uh, initially, just to watch what's going on. This is not a very heavy communication there. There are like maybe few emails a week, maybe, few, maybe not, maybe, maybe several a day, maybe. Um, yeah, but, but only important thing ha is happening. Now, in order to report, issues report it back report feature requests there is a github so we do everything on github we have github issues we have github discussions uh we have github uh, uh pull request of course and uh, and you uh, just 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 use github for all the kind of daily communication and and it's super busy it's like i'm following it up still <laughs> i don't know how i'm doing that because uh, <laughs> i got on holidays <laughs> Uh, for Friday, on Friday when I came back, I had 200 unread notifications from you. <laughs> uh, I somehow cope with that, uh, but it's it's not very easy. Uh, uh, so uh, so there, it's it's more for a kind of daily job, and you should focus on on whatever you do there by by focusing on your own PRs, your own is, is discussions and issues. Then you can ask questions, and we have a and this is very important medium for even faster communication when you just ask questions and you expect somebody to answer or help you then there is a slack channel the uh, slack um, we have a, the whole slack instance for us which you can join uh, and you can uh, there is like troubleshooting and development those are two important channels but there are many other channels not, not that busy development and troubleshooting are the most important uh, and uh, uh, and we have uh, and this is for like kind of super daily communications quick questions that somebody can answer kind of like quick announcements generally there is a lot of stuff there uh, and, and and a lot of a lot of things happens uh, but also you can get fastest the, the kind of help and troubleshooting there and uh, there is also stack overflow for general q and a's uh, and it's also pretty busy and we also try to keep keep up and answer some questions there. Uh, for adding features, again, you have the new issues that you can open for GitHub. Uh, but important thing, and then we are going to the contribution, uh, you don't have to create an issue to make a pull request. This is something that not everyone understands. And this is not like in many corporate environments. You just, if you have a small change, you can just open pull request, no problem. If you have a, some ideas or some bug, then you create an issue. But uh, creating issue is kind of bigger task, and you have to put a lot of information in there. And if there are there is a small change, we just want to avoid friction. If it's a small change, small fix, everything can be done in PR without having issue. You don't need to have an issue for 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 small change. So most of the things that uh, will be showing as you something that you can uh, start working on later on it already has some issues because there are some issues which we mark as like in good first issues but you can also like pick your own change and just you know contribute for example one of the good contributions would be if you go to the contributors quick guide and you find some mistakes this is a great contribution back to fix those mistakes and make a PR. And you don't have to need to have an issue for that. You just open a PR and that's it. And then and then I'll tell you what follows next after you open a pull request. 
So yeah, so uh, fixing a bug is, is a PR again. Uh, we have a, a nice documentation, as you can see. This documentation is rather comprehensive, uh, and we try to improve it. But yeah, this is a, a lot of documentation about different parts of Airflow. It is a complex beast. But this one is the kind of about the Airflow itself. And here, this is also a nice thing. If you find a problem with documentation, this might be also a great contribution. It's like one of the best because documentation is super important for open source projects. So otherwise we wouldn't be able to manage the project if we have to answer questions of our users. Although a lot of answers have to be already in the documentation. Lots of them are not, or maybe they are not the best answers. And they, this, this, this documentation can be, uh, can be updated and fixed and corrected. And this is a great contribution. And this is super easy. If you go here and find any, any problem that you want to fix, I'll show you how it works. Uh, I'll say security. So we have like, okay, how security works. And we want to correct a change. So this is a, a nice thing. There is a button there. So just a change on the, on, the, on the page. And what opens is the source of this page, which you can edit and you can uh, contribute uh, any change and it will open a PR pro pull request directly. So it's it's actually super easy to to fix stuff. Like say, okay, here is an installation. I want to make a change. I open it. There is this installation document and I can immediately from the UI, I can make the change and correct it here. So contributing documentation back is very easy in, in, in terms of uh, making a PR because it's 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 pretty much like you know just clicking a button here so this is this is actually uh actually cool uh what else we have here uh yeah uh another part of the discussion about that's something that you probably won't be doing anytime soon is uh, to propose a huge improvement yeah, there are airflow improvement proposals, which requires a lot of discussions, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years even. There are a number of airflow improvement proposals which are opened, uh, which I opened uh, as one of the first things I've done, and they are still not handled because it's uh, either not the right time or it requires more information. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and there is a, a whole set of those, and I'll, I'll show you airflow improvement proposals in confluence and those are completed airflow improvement proposal those are things that we've already done so you see there are a number of those but there are quite a few which we are either working on those two or some of them which are in draft stage so like, like for example we have the DAG version which is draft it's not yet kind of approved uh, and we will just work on that but th those are kind of big yeah, big changes that probably you don't have to worry about for quite a while. Stopping sharing now, and maybe we can switch back because Hugo also wrote that the pip is done. Uh, yep. So you have this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me see. Good, Airflow is installed. Great, fantastic. You have the Airflow uh, locally installed. So right now, what you can do is you can uh, just type airflow and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. So you have the command line, uh, and it is it has a number of uh, commands that you can run. And I I wouldn't invite you or I wouldn't ask you to run any of those yet because. Uh, in order to get Airflow actually up and running, you need to set up quite a few things. Yeah, you have to have web server, scheduler. So like this is this is quite complex on one hand, uh, but on the other hand, uh, the Breeze environment, which I've told you before, you can set it up and show it how it works uh, and, and, and get Airflow up and running very, very quickly. Uh, here, I don't think you can, you should uh, use it too much for, for kind of um, running tests, for example, but actually, actually, why not? I mean, that might be a good idea to try it even. So uh, you should have also PyTest installed right now. We use PyTest to run tests. And this is the important part of contribution. So PyTest, like that? Yeah, PyTest, yeah. 
So just type it. Okay. I, mean, I, I think it fail. It will fail, but but yeah. but do type it. I I, I think it's yeah. Uh, I I talk. It will do that. Uh, so uh, uh, PyTest is our test runner. So we have more than ten thousand. I think around ten thousand tests right now, and everything we contribute back has to be tested, and we use PyTest to run those tests. So. Uh, you can run those tests locally as you uh, tried and failed right now. You <laughs> yeah. failed because because uh, because uh, we have two different um, PyTest configurations right now. But if you just type PyTest test, tests, I think, uh, and you can use autocomplete as well for that. Yeah. Tests, like that? yeah. Uh, oh, don't. <laughs> All right. So that's going to take a long while. Uh, yeah, let's see. You know, it's collecting the tests to run. Yeah, there are some errors. Uh, no, because uh, the devil is not kind of like super full. It's uh, it doesn't have everything installed. So you it you haven't yet installed all, all the dependencies. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so this devil is just a kind of minimum minimum set yeah. of development uh, dependencies, but there are many many more. So so as you see, it is collecting. So stop it because it it. It's not gonna. It's gonna take a while yeah. just to collect the test, but then if you can use the autocomplete uh, and uh, pytest tests, and then let's say core. Uh, I think there is core. Uh, yeah. Core. Yeah. And just what what do we see if you have autocomplete like test for example settings. Um. Yeah. yeah. Just run it. And uh, let's see. Oh, it's right. Let's just okay. And passed. Good. And if you scroll up, you will see probably the because it, it went very quickly. We couldn't see that, but there is be there will be the kind oh, of yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Just going past. So, so this is how we run tests. Yeah, but, but rather simple. Although again, some of the tests are require a lot of external integrations external stuff to run and and that's uh, they will fail if you try to run them here in your local environment because you don't have everything that is needed for you to run and now this is the point where breeze comes in yeah so we have uh, this, this this development environment based on docker compose called breeze which is my kind of baby let's say i, I was developing it for four years with airflow and uh, in order to get into Breeze, you just type Breeze uh, with the dot slash. So like, it, it, you so don't have like it on the path. Uh, you have to start with dot slash to be able to. Oh, okay. Environment, yeah, Breeze. Just like that. Yeah. So uh, I'll explain what it does. It right now, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Wow. Oh. It, it works already. How fast? How how did you? Ah no, it's it's just building the or getting the image. Okay, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it's it's getting there. Okay, good. So if you scroll up, I'll show you what it's doing uh, yeah. a little bit from the very beginning. So initially, it uh, it asks you whether to build the image because you have never built it before. Yeah, and. Uh, you, you didn't um, answer yes, uh, which means that it is just using the image which is available uh, on um, in our repository, in our registry. It will. It is now uh, oh, kind of banner. There is some cheat sheet explaining which version you, you are using, which is the Python version, which is the backend we are using SQLite initially, which is the branch you are running for, all the information. It gives you also a few uh, um, cheat sheet actions that you can take. So, for example, you can add Breeze to your path, as mentioned above. Mm. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, uh, and this way you will not have to die. type this dot slash initially. Yeah. It will be on your path. Then it will tell, tell you like how to, uh, how ports are forwarded because um, the whole environment is will be set up in the Docker container running on your machine. Uh, so you need to have some way of mm, connecting to this this machine, and then we have port forwards set up. So there are some ports automatically forwarded for you, and some links. 
Uh, and the important part is Breeze setup autocomplete, which I will ask you to do in a moment, because this way you can have autocomplete on the Breeze commands because it has a number of uh, switches as well. Uh, yeah, and you can disable this cheat sheet and ask you art. Uh, and what happens right now, it just, it was unable to find the image and pulls the image right now. And that the first time this will take quite some time because it is uh, one and a half gigabyte to pull. Yeah, no, that's going to take hours with my internet. Is it, is it hours really or? Uh... Well, yeah, if I'm honest, maybe like one hour. <laughs> it's really bad. I don't live in the city. I live in like the countryside. So uh -huh. I don't have cable internet. It comes in a, in a antenna and stuff it's really bad uh, but is that because I hope I'm I... not using too much of your uh, of your <laughs> bandwidth oh, don't worry is money. that because I didn't pr put yes here it, it doesn't matter the first the first time you have to have the image oh yeah okay and because because otherwise building the image takes even longer just pulling it is usually much faster because uh, you anyhow have to pull a lot of dependencies yeah okay so this is something that uh, usually we, when we prepare with prerequisites, uh, we ask people to do it uh, before <laughs> because it does take a lot of uh, issues. Oh, it's not that bad, I think. One half megabit. Yeah. No, it's not going to be hours. Like yeah. But it sometimes goes down like that and stays in like 200 for a while. And yeah, but OK, it's yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it works. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's gonna it's gonna be fast. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna take like maybe ten minutes, I think. No, okay. no, Jarek, because uh, I mean, if it's two hundred, let's say it's one megabit. Are those bits or bytes? Bytes are bytes. Those are bytes. Maybe bytes. Okay. Maybe bytes. Yeah, so it's not that bad. I thought they were bits. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, no, I, I, you know, I kind of, I know the, 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 the image and I know I'm, I'm seeing that it's not gonna be very, very slow. Uh, I think it's gonna be literally maybe five to 10 minutes and, 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 and it's worth it in terms of like, once you do it, you really have, once you do it for the first time, it should be much faster uh to iterate and much much faster to run uh, your tests and much much more repeatable yeah to run the test and in the meantime um, we can let it running and i will uh i will switch and tell a little bit more uh, unless we want to have a break we have a, about an hour uh, to go. let me uh just um Answer a couple of questions. There's the same question. Irmin and Diego are asking about the recording. The session is being recorded. Um, we'll send you a link to the recorded raw file. Uh, it's going to be like two gigabytes because Jarek shares in 4K video. And <laughs> so, so that. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be like two gigabytes, but we'll share. We'll send you the link. Uh, sh we should have it early next week. The link to the recording is, but it will be a link to a Google Drive file. But yeah, you can, you can, Pedro, you can upload it to YouTube, and then it will get you know automatically, uh, you know, recompressed. Recompressed. Re okay, we can do that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we'll send you an email early next week with that link. Uh, and we have another workshop that has to start in 50 minutes, Jarek. So you, in you decide uh, if we do a break or not. But yeah, we need to make a hard stop in 50 minutes. OK, that's fine. So I'll, I'll just continue. I hope okay. uh, everyone is still alive there. <laughs> we did some interaction, so hopefully uh, things will work <laughs> well. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll show, um, I, I hope, I really hope it's, if, it, if it will take like 10 minutes, then I'll have enough time to show the, the kind of the power of Breeze environment and these pre-commits, because those are important. 
but in the meantime, uh, I'll tell a little bit and let me share my screen. Uh, so just uh, just let uh, let us know Hugo if the uh, when when it hopefully succeeds. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll let you know. Cool. So um, okay, presentation. Uh, so so Git we had like you had set up you have the the, the clone of the repository, then you have this breeze and local virtual end. So you have local virtual and set up and Breeze is being set up right now. Pre-commits, I'll show in a moment. You don't like either setup, I will not show that, but that's rather straightforward. You can follow everyone who followed the, the kind of contributors quick guide with your favorite uh, IDE. There is a VS code and IntelliJ step-by-step uh, -step instruction in quick contributors guide, the link which I sent before how to set it up. But then the next thing like, okay, what should I work on? What should I do? Yeah, that, that's that's an important question. Uh, and uh, the easiest way, so there are those two links uh, here: uh, GitHub com Apache Airflow contribute and labels contributors workshop. The first one, this is provided by by uh, by Google by GitHub in general. I'll just make it a little bit bigger so that you can see. See, so this is the uh, general link like uh, repository slash contribute and you can you can first of all read the contributing guidelines and the quick contributors guide is not as quick uh, but it's quick version of what is written in contributing guidelines this is like a big document don't think that you can you know digest it very easily quickly but uh, maybe just it's worth to um, take a look uh, at it uh, and understand what is there or oh, what's going on somehow i cannot switch uh, something wrong is going on here uh, oh sorry oh there it goes so you can see all the different a lot of information which i'm telling you right now like how the, the community works how to contribute uh, is, is, is written here, all the steps, some guidelines that you have to follow, what, how branches work, what are the development environments, which I was talking to you before, the extras, and all the stuff is explained here, but it is a lot of information. Don't expect to digest it all, but be sure that whenever you need to find some answers, you probably will find them there. It's, it's like if you are looking like how to do something, uh, when in terms of contribution, you probably will find the answer in this document uh, if, you, if you're looking for it. Uh, of course, you need to first of all know uh, what questions to ask, but I hope uh, like after today's you will know at least what questions to ask. But then the documentation is really helpful uh, because, because we try to put everything, everything into documentation. On the other hand, it's so huge that don't expect to be able to digest it uh, easily. Uh, so that's uh, that's what that's that's what provides that what the contribution contribute link provides you the link to the contributing RST. But the important thing is the those are the list of issues that we marked as good first issue. This is the label which tells uh, okay this is something that is probably rather straightforward, maybe not like super simple, but something that you can learn on. You don't need a lot of knowledge. And experience to start working on those issues, and you can you can you can see if you can if, if you can uh, it, you can just browse through them, uh, and and see if it's something that might pique your interest. And if you look there, I'm just scrolling, 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 scrolling. Uh, oh, there are plenty of issues which are marked like that. We have a lot of issues in our uh, project. The project is. Like there are lots of contributors, as I mentioned, so we don't even try to fix everything. But if we see an easy issue that is not super priority to fix, we just mark it as good first issue and those are for you to pick. And there are like some that are better described or worse described, uh, but 
there are so and some there are some very simple ones like kind of up, updating the documentation but some that are a little bit more complex and there is no like mm, without reading you will not be able to to, to understand what uh, whether it's a complex one or super you know difficult one uh, but there are a few things that you can you can see if you want to uh, for example contribute to documentation then you can look for documentation and okay here is one uh, how to this how to uh, yeah we had some problems with uh, upgrading to different version of pendulum there is a breaking change and we would like to describe it better in the documentation Contributing documentation is one of the best ways you can contribute to a project like ours, because then you learn, uh, you improve the documentation for others, you make it more readable, and uh, okay, it's done, but there is an error. So let's switch quickly to see. Uh, I'm stopping sharing. If you can switch to your screen and see what errors we, we can hopefully yeah. fix it. You unknown Docker Compose version at least one twenty nine is needed. <laughs> one twenty nine. Yes, that's what I mentioned. I hoped that it will work uh, with one twenty nine, with two two zero one. Can yeah. can you run again Docker Compose minus minus version to see? Yeah. Like that, oh, no. Uh, with dash, with dash. Uh, that. Compose without R, R at the end. Oh, 2.0. Uh, ooh. Can you try again, maybe? Because I think uh, just run Breeze, yeah. Uh, it should be much faster. Mm, okay, four seconds. It will automatically answer no. Uh, it's checking the not enough disk space. Okay, but that's a warning only. Not enough resources. Okay, okay. Um, okay, can you maybe the the simplest way? Can you find in the history the um, the installation for Docker Compose. I'll I'll have to see because the this this two zero version is breaking, so I didn't know. So in the, the, the history there is there was this um, uh, sudo URL Docker Compose Compose URL. Yes, two thousand five, I think the the one before uh, the one that you see here. Uh, yeah, just put in releases. Uh, just, just, just set compose version. Um, 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 uh, uh, let me see. Docker compose install. Mm -hmm. Install Docker compose. Uh, I didn't know that they released this two one zero two version. Can you, oh, the best. Can you open the browser and go to the Docker Compose uh, and find in Google Docker Compose install? Because there, I, yeah, I was, I was quite sure. Yeah, install Docker Compose and you switch, uh, choose Linux. Mm. Just below, a little bit, scroll a little bit down. And there is Linux. Yeah, yeah there was a tab with Linux. Uh. I don't see it. Oh yeah, here. All right. And you see, it's it actually installed one two as the latest one. So I'm not sure where this 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 two zero came from, but uh, just just run this one. Okay. And uh, now let's see what version you have. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, 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 you need to. 
Let me give it a second. And then. Yeah. This one? Mm -hmm. Or this one? Yeah, I, I don't think you need to do this link uh, before. It just start yeah. the work. Yeah. All right. Good. And now run Breeze. Yeah. Okay, just type no. Great. This is this is it. It works. Okay. There are a few warnings that you will see, like above, like for example, you can run this Airflow WW compile assets. Uh, it's it's something that uh, is needed for the UI. So we can just uh, just run it from here. All right. Because what what happens now? You are now in the inside of the container, inside of the Airflow container, which has everything that is needed. Airflow. for that. Assets. Assets. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what it does right now, it compiles the assets for UI. And, and, and Breeze will tell you exactly like when you have, you know, something to do with it on your on your system, yeah, that something is out of date and you have to rebuild it, etc. So right now, uh, it also will take a little bit of time. Yeah, first time, as usual. Because yeah. right now it installs the uh, node modules, which are another half, the second half of the internet to be downloaded. Yeah, so, okay, it's done. Good. And now you can exit, uh, just exit, yeah. exit, and enter again. And maybe this time try to answer yes for, for Breeze, because what, what happens, mm -hmm. You need to build it uh, uh, once, yeah. So right now what it does, it uh, makes sure that whatever you have locally uh, corresponds to the latest version of your source code that you have, yeah. So uh, right now it in installs all dependencies which are needed and it uses the docker image to the image is like already have them so it, it will just update those which are uh, which are which which are new but by running the build you make sure that what you have locally is exactly the same as is on the on the CI and by anyone else which means that environment that you have your tests uh, it's uh, it's exactly the same as for all the others. And this means that whatever fails for you will fail for others. And when it succeeds, it's very likely that it will succeed for others as well. Uh, you need some disk space. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see where can I get it. <laughs> uh, that, that, that is a bit of, of issue, and as you saw, when you will see it finishes, it will actually tell you that uh, you need more, uh, that, that you don't have probably enough space. Yeah. yeah? yeah. But it's, it was a warning. It's not, uh, I think that it's not hard. However, uh, you probably need uh, a little bit more space in, uh, to be to feel comfortable because it will sometimes you know, build stuff and takes a lot of uh, disk uh, for a number of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is something that uh, is almost finished. Finished, yeah. And this usually this this rebuild step is is only once again, and uh, whenever somebody adds new dependencies or adds new uh, new stuff uh, to the image, uh, it will ask you whether you should rebuild or not, and you don't have to do it. It's just when you really want to refresh and rebuild everything and make sure that that you want to you know the, the latest and greatest uh, stuff and that all the tests will will succeed okay mm -hmm. good oh, it's 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 almost finished it's, it's it will really will take a few more seconds uh, luckily on Linux, it's it's uh, the Docker is, is is usually very fast. Okay, 
no broken requirements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest will go very quickly. Ah, the, the node modules for the first time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 19, six. Good, 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 good. All right. Good. So you are now. So now the, the nice thing here is like you can run PyTest here the same way as before. And uh, so like PyTest and tests. But this time, if you run it, you will not see those errors and you will not see, uh, you will see like many, many more tests, not everything, but you will see many more because the, your environment is exactly as the one which is used on CI. Yeah, so you see now all the, it's being collected and it will take that. Uh, yeah. And running all those tests will test, uh, will take a lot of time as well. Uh, uh, there are some ways how to speed it up, but you usually just to, need to run one test or a few tests or group of tests yeah, if you if you work on something so you don't have to run all of them mm. oh, okay yeah so so you broke it very well very good uh, and 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 breeze is great environment for that and that's something that you should keep in mind and uh, whenever you want to run tests just running them in breeze will help you but there are a few things which are really useful. If you exit from uh, from from Breeze now, just exit. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh yeah, because and I... now, yeah, yeah, that's okay because you had an error. Uh, then 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 now you have this Breeze setup autocomplete, which I uh, uh, which was uh, in the cheat sheet. So just yeah, type yeah. breeze and set up autocomplete with, uh, but but you have to start yeah. with dot slash unless you put the, the path, yeah. Uh, uh, now you don't have uh, autocomplete yet. That's not the, really, yeah. It's set up, set up dash autocomplete. Just, you just do it once. Uh, dash up. autocomplete. I believe, I think it's that. Um. Like that? Uh, slash, uh, dash, sorry. Set up dash autocomplete. Yeah, I think, as far as I remember. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't press it fast enough. Yeah. All right. Yes. OK. So now source, uh, execute this source bash completion. And next time, uh, uh, there is this comment at the end. Yeah. Uh, either or maybe exit and re-enter the shell script. Yeah. Okay, that's the same. Uh, uh, and come, you don't even have to set up the environment, but you could switch to the, the environment. Oh yeah. The, come on, activate. Need to do that. Yeah. Okay, and then now if you type breeze, start typing breeze, and then then you should have. Yeah. Really nice autocomplete, yes. I'll uh, just display them. Yeah, so it has a number of switches, a number of options, and you don't need to understand all of those, of course. Uh, uh, I mean, unless you do something, uh, something really uh, complex. Uh, so if, you, but if you start with like, uh, of course, you can have help. So Breeze help will help you. So you can just run it. So if it um, just as usual stuff. So it yeah. explains you what you can do. So by default, you do this shell command, and then you enter the, the, the command, but you can do all the other stuff, building image, building docs, a number of other stuff. But the, the one that is actually useful uh, for testing, if you want to test a real airflow, then there is this start airflow command. This one. Yeah. Okay. I'll just run it. And what it does now, it will uh, open for uh, like initialize the database uh, because we we are using the database. It is all happening in the background for you. It will open four different terminals uh, in TMUX. I don't know if you know TMUX. Uh, TMUX. Nope. 
uh, but it's uh, it's just it, you you'll see in a moment it, it will oh, just okay. start different yeah that's the whole thing and it will actually start airflow for you <laughs> and all the components in there uh, so if you make it bigger it will just be, be better better visible if you have bigger screen but right now what it does it's it runs in one uh, in one screen it, it runs scheduler in another workers in another web server <laughs> In another, it it actually runs uh, uh, kind of development version of the the, server, the web server if you want to develop Airflow. Uh, and now you can connect from the browser to localhost 2000. Uh, just just open your browser just as usual and connect to localhost uh, colon uh, to, to 28 to let me see, I can't remember that local host. 28080. Port 28080. 080. 280. I, I had, I had, I didn't have the uh, keyboard, All right? Uh, what was it? 28080. 8080. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then you have Airflow running, actually. And that's that's quite cool, because that's the Airflow from your own sources. So that's the one, if you modify it right now in your yeah. sources and restart it, uh, it will just get it here. And you can log in with admin admin. Yeah. And it's using uh, SQLite as a database, as you see here. There is a warning, because SQLite is just for testing and development. Uh, mm -hmm. and and it just works. Uh, and now you can do a few other things which are also interesting for testing. So you can exit again the, the breeze. And I'll show you another common, and that's that's pretty useful. Uh, how do I exit? Oh, just exit. There is this, you see the first uh, terminal, it's just type stop airflow. That, that's just how it is written. Stop uh, airflow. Stop underscore airflow. It's, oh. uh, you see, uh, uh, it's it's written in the. Uh, Stop. Ah, I didn't. I always do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now, uh, when you type breeze uh, again and uh, uh, breeze, and then uh, start typing backend the dash dash backend. Yeah. And then you can autocomplete. And you can choose MySQL, for example. And then, uh, uh, yeah, what it does, and that, that's also an interesting one, it's actually pulling a MySQL Docker for you automatically, container, okay. and starts it. So without setting up anything, you have the MySQL database that uh, Airflow will connect to. Uh, so this way you can test all your tests with, with the different databases because the, the environment will just set it up and configure it for you automatically. And that's kind of powerful because you can very easily, without knowing how MySQL works, without, uh, you know, like setting it up and configuring it locally, it just, it, it will just work simply. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is the, this is really nice. It, 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 again, the first time it takes a little bit of time. Uh, but uh, but after it is installed, uh, it will be actually quite fast. Like for for SQLite as a database is uh, very slow for Airflow because it only can run run sequentially. For MySQL, it can run in parallel. It will be much faster, and I, I, you will see how much fast how fast it is even in your local environment. In a moment. Um, so this is the, this is how it, uh, yeah, a few moments. Um, and yeah, there are a number of other parameters you can give, which I will not go into details because that's already overwhelmed. <laughs> it's already a lot. Uh, but those are the kind of very, very uh, simple and most useful uh, commands that you can use to test your airflow locally. One thing, I don't know if how much you or others know Docker, the nice thing is that the source code of your local um, checked out repository, the one that you checked out, is mounted inside the Docker. So 
you can use your IDE outside in your in your in your host. Either it's like macOS or or Linux, but whatever you modify there, it's immediately immediately available inside the Docker. So, uh, so when you start and run Airflow here, uh, it will use exactly the same. Uh, the same sources as you have in locally. So you can just develop it very quickly and restart it here and we'll pick it up. And now, uh, yeah, you didn't you didn't start Airflow. So now it, it's not available. So just, just exit now. So yeah, next time it will be faster. And I'll show you something something else as well, like another autocomplete. So stop. you don't have to now choose the backend because backend is automatically switched now to MySQL. So next, it will rem remember that. So next time when you enter okay. MySQL, but when you type start airflow, you can also type uh, load uh, example DAGs, I think. And that's the switch. So Greece start uh, uh, dash dash. It's it's a flag. So we double uh, dashes. Ah. Load example DAGs. Yes. That one, right? And start airflow. Uh, and then start. Mm -hmm. uh, without dash this time, because this is a comment for example. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now it's going to be much faster. It will take a little bit of time to, to start because it, now it is actually you know initializing the database for you. So it creates all the schema database for you. So normally when you develop stuff, you, you, you would have to do it yourself, initialize the database, set it up. But Breeze uh, does all the complexity for you and it will automate all the stuff to make the environment exactly in the way that, that makes it usable from, from, from get go, basically. Yeah. So you could you could okay. do that yourself this way, but then it would be kind of like you need to know what you're doing initially. It's, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. So just try it now. It it does sometimes take a little bit of time to to start. Yeah. Yeah. And now you see all the example cool. DAGs. Yeah. So th those are example DAGs that that you can run, and you can just enable like. Uh, for example, uh, there is an example uh, uh, complex. Example complex. It's it's a nice one. Yeah, enable it, and then you can trigger it. On the right side, you have this play button at the end, at the very end, and it will start it. It will trigger it, uh, and then you click on the example DAG, example complex. Yeah, click on it, and then you see. You know, this is quite complex dependency yeah. graph. Uh, but you see it's it's progressing. So those green boxes are tasks which are already completed. And when you click on the, you can click on the, um, on the top if you scroll up, because this is nice, the, there is a Gantt chart. This will show you exactly, uh, this is more, much better. Uh, it's like, yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, so we will see how those tasks were executed. Yeah? The kind of history of them and dependencies between them. And then you can click and like it is this complex UI, but but this way you have a working airflow built from your sources using your own database that you can modify and run. And whenever changes you have, you can test it using the PyTest. So you can run your unit tests uh, uh, in in uh, in the in Greece. But you also have in this case you have a running airflow installation using your sources, so you can very easily test your changes even if you modify UI or if you modify some behavior. So this is the kind of environment for for uh, for running, and I, I'm actually super surprised that we managed to set it up during this, yeah. this workshop, and it was working kind of smooth, in a way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll not, of course, go into details. The the menu is 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 kind of like there are lots of different different features here, mm, so we will not go into this. But let's maybe go back to uh, let's see. Um, yeah, basically, this is all you need. This is all you need to test and, and develop Airflow. Yeah, you have uh, actually, you know, now you are ready to go and, and do the great things like develop Airflow. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no more setup is needed. So, so uh, I hope I succeeded to, you know, because I, I spent a lot of time to make this kind of uh, out of working out of the box. Uh, almost, and uh, it seems to this works. 
there are lots of other small things in there, but basically, yeah, let's see how you can uh, develop and cho choose and choose an issue, and then we can. Uh, uh, I can show you the, the a little bit of code structure and, and how how how, where, how you can start contributing. Okay. okay, so should I stop sharing? Yep. Or, yeah. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Congrats! How does it feel, Jarek, to to see your work work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's great to see that it works. Actually, you know, like it's <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. Um, and uh, it, what makes it easier is like like on Linux it works it works best yeah <laughs> because I have Linux <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, good uh, so share screen uh, let me share my screen as well with the with the issues uh, so there it goes. Okay, so this is an example documentation update, and well, you but you basically have to read uh, the descriptions. We try to be as descriptive as possible, uh, describing the issues and and try to find how you can make some fixes uh, or, or what are the fixes you can make. And usually, like the documentation ones are easy to start, but there are some others. For example, oh, there is a upgrading Google API Python client client too. So some of them require just the Python knowledge. Some of them require kind of UI knowledge if you want to modify a small thing in the UI, or some of them require a more like this API client is more like dependency, which is rather complex uh, stuff. Uh, but let's see. Mm, uh, ah, this is this is a good one that you can start. So the, uh, or maybe not, <laughs> change my mind. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's say, um, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe some coding. Uh, maybe not, let me see. Something okay. Coding exercise. So we have a Python virtual end operator, and it should use some requirement. Oh no, no it's ah uh, no, it's it's, it's uh, let me see something very very uh, very very simple. Hmm. Client instance uh, example uh, how to guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, those are not that simple ones, I see. Uh, okay, but uh, but maybe maybe this. So. Just adding documentation first, because this is this is also uh, a little bit of coding. Uh, uh, so, what what we are trying to, to 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 do, we are trying to get our documentation really like comprehensive and good. And in order to do that, we join the documentation and examples and the actual kind of example DAGs that are exec executable DAGs. So those example dice that you show, uh, what, when, what you saw when when you started Airflow, so those are all put together. So we have uh, example DAGs which can be executed, which provide a kind of example of how you can write the DAGs, and I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But they are also a parts of that DAG is put; they are put as part of the documentation. So that we can sh can be sure that whatever we have in the documentation is accurate, because it's also a runnable, executable uh, DAG that you can run in Airflow, and we have a lot of examples of those. I will show you that on my uh, Airflow, and, and I have to do it, of course, bigger mm. uh, on my 
uh, IDE. I don't know if you see that. I'm not sure if I can. Maybe I can switch to presentation mode. Uh, uh, appearance presentation mode. Okay. Is it is it big enough? I, I hope so. Yes. Yes, it is. We can yes. see it. So maybe okay. Let's see if I can work somehow. Uh, uh, this uh, Zoom doesn't make it easy because I don't seem to be able to get the menu. <laughs> okay. Uh, one moment. I'm not very well prepared for that, so I'll I'll actually exit the presentation mode because it's not very good. I'll just make this bigger. It should be enough. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's fine. Uh, it will not see the structure probably because it's a bit too uh, too small for you. Uh, but uh, just to give you an example of examples that we have, um, so we have a uh, Airflow providers, Google. Um, uh, Cloud example DAX example BigQuery DS. Okay, so this is an example DAG that we have. And just to explain you a little bit, also how this how Airflow works, um, you create a DAG. This is Python. This is all Python code. Yeah. So we are using some Python constructs. We name it somehow. It there is some schedule interval, some start date parameters. Then you have tasks. So each task is task is this operator, for example, here. So this is an operator, it creates a task. There is creating transfer operator. There is like start transfer operator. There is a sensor that waits for it to complete. And, uh, and all those are automatically uh, Put together as uh, dependencies be between them are put. So, so first the create like the transfer is run, then there is the service start transfer, and there are some dependencies which are automatically created. And this is the this is the way how you make dependencies between the task, for example. And some of them are automatically created. It's kind of you don't need to understand that, but the, this is this is basically how most of the DAGs for Airflow look like. It's like creating some operators, putting them together, dependencies between them. And by doing that, Airflow knows how to create this nice graph, like the complex graph you saw, like it will just build it automatically. But what is important here, we have a lot of uh, uh, those example DAGs are explained in the documentation as examples. Uh, and this documentation takes part of those DAGs extracts them and puts them into documentation. So if I switch now, go to the, this is example, BigQuery DTS, whatever service is this, we have lots of them. Yeah? So I'll go there, Airflow Apache org, documentation. Uh, I know where it is, so I'll just go there directly to it. So Google, uh, operators, um, cloud, you see, you see how many of those we have here, um, DTS. So this is the operator uh, documentation. Yeah? And it explains stuff, uh, how it works. And part of this documentation are those examples that you saw. So if, you, if I switch here, you see this is a, a the query create the data transfer operators. That's this part of the documentation is taken here, and if you if you look here, you can copy paste here. You can even look at this, go to the sources of it, uh, and and this is all fully automatically extracted from the uh, examples that that you show. This example is also, by the way, uh, fully runnable. So this example you can just. Put the DAG in the Airflow, run it, and it should actually run if you have the proper configuration of your project uh, in Google, in this case. So what we want to do, we want to improve uh, our documentation and add more examples of how things should run. 
uh, and how it looks like, just going back a little. So this is an example DAG, but there is also a corresponding doc, docs, Apache Airflow providers. And again, of, of course, this, uh, how you find it, it's uh, uh, like there, there is a big hierarchy a structure but I'll find the one which is uh, responsive to the, those big query DTS. So, uh, okay. So this is actually, if you see my IntelliJ uh, and uh, this, there is a preview. So this is an RST file, which is the part of documentation. And this is exactly what you saw before here. Yeah, is, uh, so this is, this, is, this is where the documentation is, is from. So this is the RST file. Um, and part of this documentation is or those directives, which take the example uh, DAG, which is Python code, take part of it, which is marked with this start and end, and put it as part of this example include, which you see here. Yeah. And you might see it's not kind of like, it's not, not fun <laughs> to, to write this kind of documentation. Maybe you, you would think documentation is not that important, but it's like, extremely important and actually it's quite fun if you want to develop this documentation uh, and add it uh, because you can learn you can uh, actually take the example uh, example DAG here and try to run it and try to see if it actually works connects to the service that you want to describe and see that it pro progresses that it works and once it, you get it working, which is a bit of fun in coding and you have, have to like understand how it works. Then you just mark those parts with, with this, uh, uh, this start and end. And then you write the right uh, documentation, which is using it. And the result is that other people who would like to learn how to use it will have the good example, good documentation that they will have to can follow. And you have a, actually a running code, which does the job. You tested it. You've learned a little bit. That's a very good contribution. So going back to the to this, this particular uh, example, and again, when I'm switching, it's somehow not working too well. OK, now it started. So going to this. Um, Something happens with. Uh, uh, You're trying to go back to the issue? Uh, yeah. To the GitHub issue? Yeah. Trying to back to the issue, uh, but some, somehow it doesn't let me do it. Uh, where was it? I think it was here. Yeah. So cue ball operator. So we have to find the cue ball operator, which is somewhere. And we need to add the documentation because it doesn't have a good one. And you might learn cue ball uh, 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 along the way. Or maybe you already know cue ball and then you can, you know, you can actually, you have the account and you can connect to it. So, okay, going here. Okay, there is a provider uh, cue ball. Whatever Kubel is, I don't know too much. It has some example DAGs actually, yeah. Uh, so actually you don't even have to, you know, uh, learn it too much because you can see that somebody already wrote it, but just running and seeing and learning what Kubel does and uh, being able to, to try to, to run the DAG. There are a few DAGs here. Uh, there is like one DAG second one second dag so okay somebody has done the job before and, and prepared those uh, those dags that's good then you can just run and test and learn how to work how those works uh, but now the problem is that we don't have a, a documentation using it, uh, using those examples so if you go to the um, okay, five minutes so I'm, I'm just finishing so if you go to the documentation uh, so don't be afraid, uh, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, the corresponding 
folder structure for documents is not there, so I suppose the documentation for the QLA yeah. is so explained. We have just example DAGs here that we can go through, uh, but there is no documentation. And you need okay. to just find the, uh, create the RST file in the right place. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Kubel is here. So it has only three files, but then uh, if you look at other providers like the Google, which, uh, which I provide, uh, I showed you, uh, you just, there is a, a way how to add new RST file, mark those marks here for examples and explain what's going on. Actually, the explanation is here. Uh, if you look here, somebody already spent some time to add the, the kind of comments, but they are in the example that not, not very useful. It would be great to have them in the, in the documentation. So this is an example uh, issue to implement and how to work, how, how this works, uh, how, how to use the environment that you use. So you can connect your IDE, you can run this DAG through the airflow that you have installed in, in Breeze. You can uh, modify the code uh, and run some tests on Kubel to see if it's running. But also you can use Breeze to build the documentation. So there is like build docs comment. And when you make this RST file and modify it, you can just run the docs, build the docs. It's all explained in the document, in the command line, in the help, and in, in all the multitude of documentation we have, how to build documentation. But you can run it locally in Breeze and test it. I haven't shown one thing, which is pre-commit, uh, and I will have no time. Uh, I should have done that. Uh, but the first, the next thing that you should do is to go through the contributors guide and read about the pre-commit and how to install it and how to run it, because then it will work in the way that whenever you try to commit any change, it will also run 70 or 80 checks to see if what you are committing is good. And it will even automatically correct for you any kind of mistakes that you've made. Uh, and not any, but some, um, and you will be able to much faster iterate because all the changes you've done uh, will, like all the errors will be shown to you before you commit the code, before you send it to the CI, before you send it, sending to us, send it to us. The next steps, and we will not go into details. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we shown the, the, the development environment setup and everything working, but the next step is like to submit the PR and start communicate and, and make code review. But this one is something that uh, we will have to do online in terms of just submit the PR, just read the contributor's guide, submit the changes and uh, just re read through the pull request guidelines. And, and then we meet online and I will be helping you or ping, uh, ping me if you need any help, if you want to contribute. Uh, and I'll be happy to help remotely uh, via Slack or via communication on, on, on GitHub in PRs and explanation and, uh, and happy to help it, help you. I'm happy that we have this environment that everybody saw how to start, how to be, uh, how to use it. And that's it. Okay. Jarek, how do we... Uh contact you? How can we ping you? Uh, first of all, on Slack, uh, Airflow Slack, there is uh, Jarek Potiuk. Uh, I'm always like either Jarek or, or Potiuk or Jarek Potiuk. Uh, on, uh, it's best to, um, if you have some questions and some, you know, issues and you would like to ask questions, it's best to ask on the uh, public channels because then others can help not only me I might not be available at that time uh, so just uh, just ask your question on like troubleshooting or development channel uh, and then github on github you have uh, you can also mark me with at pot you and also in slack if you want to ping me you can mark me with at pot you or at yarek pot you I can't remember on slack uh, and that's it okay I just posted in the chat the URL to get an invite to the Airflow Slack. It's mm -hmm. apache-airflow.slack.com. If you go there, you get an invite to to join the Airflow Slack. I think it's a different URL, but uh, on the community page oh, that's right. Airflow, you will find the right one. 
uh, on the community page of, of, of apacheelvo.org. Yeah, my bad. Uh, that that link that I posted is the direct URL to the Slack, but if you don't have an invite, you won't be able to log in. So I need to. But post. it's it's you you will find it on the community page of Apache Airflow website. Okay. Uh, there is a link how to get the invitation. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jarek. Thank you. And we will share the recording. I just realized that some of you may re may need it before this weekend. So we'll apply ourselves to it so that you can get the recording before this weekend. Thank you so much, Jarek. Good night. Thank you.